Hey there, how y'all doing? Welcome back to Joe's Computer Museum. My name is Joe Strohsnyder, arbiter, runner, proprietor of this fine establishment. It's a mess. Anyway, how we all doing this evening? Again, my name is Joe. Thank you all for stopping by and hanging out with me tonight. Got a lot of our old friends in the chat tonight. We've got... Let's see who all we have. We have Thomas R. Strong, Christian Iverson, Sloopy Malibu, Frank S. K. Mac Vintage. Um, Trina is here. Of Trina's a techno babble. Um, who else we got here? I'm just scrolling through. We got uh, Cat Scott Nick. Oh, Scott Nicky. I'm sorry, Cat. I always mispronounce your name. I am. I apologize. Um, and who else? Zooming Frodo Jedi. Frank is here. We've got Garth Beagle is here. Um, Jeremy's Vintage Hillbilly Shack, Acid Rain, and other 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 people there. Again, thank you all for stopping by. Now, um, silly, stupid little things to get out of the way. Dumb housekeeping rules. Uh, or housekeeping stuff. Remember, this is not a free enterprise. It takes time for me to do these things. Um, and uh, I do appreciate any uh, any way you guys help me out to do that. Um, you can do that by simply hitting the like button. Hitting the like button on this stream. That tells YouTube that you like my content and will show your content to other people who watch content the same as you. So that's a cool thing. Um, you can go to jcm-1.com and pick up a trinket or a t-shirt or a mug or a keyboard encoder or one of these things that we're building tonight if that's uh, that's what you want to do and that helps keep the operation going. Um, other things, you can also uh, follow me on uh, Mastodon at museumjoe.bytes.space. I just got a Blue Sky account, so you can go find me on there at Museum Joe. Uh, or you can uh, become a patron for as little as a dollar a month, and you can do things like hang out with me on these streams, like this wonderful person right here, Adam. Hi, Adam. Hello. Are you are you are you um, traveling today? I am. Yeah, it sounds like you're in the bathroom. I'm in my hotel room, and I picked a horrible spot. <laughs> I, might, I might move around here. <laughs> it's a little bit echoey. I'm going to try to sync my AirPods to my laptop so I can be less annoying. So let me mute until I figure that out. Oh, I don't think that'll make you less annoying. It'll just make you less echoey. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so again, thanks everybody for stopping by. So what are we doing tonight? Um, we are going to be building the Titan 3 Plus 2 board set for the Apple 3 computer. So what the heck is this dumb thing? Well, it's a big, huge Chongus uh, pair of boards that untethers all of the Apple II functionality within the Apple III and basically makes your Apple III and Apple IIe uh, with full 128 kilobytes of RAM, with full double or high-res support, and all of that magic. Now, you may be wondering why you'd want to do this, and I just think it's cool. Everybody that I've talked to wants a pair of these boards. You can't find them. They're rarer than hen's teeth. They're rarer than dinosaur feathers. They're just, you know, they're hard to get. And I figured let's go ahead and clone those and make those available. I've also been on a huge uh, spiel for the past, I don't know, year or so to try to come up with ways to make the Apple III a cool, fun platform to people for people to work with again. And um, that doesn't only include these, but it in includes replacement ROMs, replacement keyboard, encoders, replacement, um, 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 other things that brain fail, whatever. I don't know. Um, Sloopy Malibu being the funny one here. So it makes you spend $1,000 to make a $3,000 computer work like an $800 computer. Yes, exactly. That's exactly the point. So no, um, the idea here was to try to create a market so that for like the Apple three, so you could use the Apple three like an Apple two and replace your Apple twos, but still have Apple two compatibility, but use all, all the potential new Apple three software. And there was some, some potential there, but you know, most people just never did that because there was never really any good software for the Apple three was the thing, but I'm hoping to change that. So let's just do it. Um, go to the bench and we got to build up 
these two boards. Lots of stuff involved in building these boards. Um, uh, that is not quite aligned. Let's fix that. Maybe we need to be zoomed down a little bit. Will that help too? Let's do that. Whee! That's a little better. That's a little better for you guys to see. So, yep, got to put in all the sockets, put in all of the resistors, all the capacitors. There's a couple of uh, pin headers we have to put in there and then stuff it full of chips. So that's all there really is to it. The one I'm going to do first is the three plus two. That's this one first. So we're just going to start with all the capacitators because there's like 47 of them in the board. Doobie, 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 doobie. Do, 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 do. I don't remember how many it needs, but we're just going to grab a whole bunch. Um, get my bender thing doodle. Put this over here. You can't see it, but I have all my, uh, all my all my parts and everything here all lined up over here and ready for installation. So you should just be able to just kick it and go. Oh my gosh, Javier just, he invited himself. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hi, Javier. How you doing, buddy? How are you doing? Hey, Adam, the man of the hour. I'm not sure if he can hear us. <laughs> oh, that's why. <laughs> How uh, you doing? Same old crap. Different oh, day. That is correct. There's uh, guard. Oh, I got to print that thing that I made for the guard. I, I need to have my own... My own candle in the wind. Hey, can you guys Frank. hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. All right, cool. Oh, there you go. He's alive. I never, I never actually synced these AirPods with this Windows laptop before. It was a, a process. Windows, wow. Hold it yeah. Hey, Sloppy. Hey, Jeremy. Trina. Sloppy? I think it's Sloopy. Sloopy, right. sorry. <laughs> I'm the sloppy one. Oh, Kate's there. Kate. <laughs> Joe could call this board the Apple 3 Cinco. Yes. <laughs> Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. <laughs> yeah, if it's a three plus two, then it is a Cinco. Yeah. It's a Stinko. Stinko de Mayo. <laughs> you can also call it the most expensive Apple IIe ever. Yes. <laughs> just trying to get these uh capacitors in here this is the first one i've done with uh axial uh capacitors i usually use radials i'm trying to get the, the bend -a doodle correct for them hmm. i'm wondering if i was the only one to buy one of these titan board sets without actually owning an apple three at the time <laughs> good question i don't know i have one now Yay. I didn't really put like a, a survey on the website to say, do you actually own an Apple III, you crazy person? Me too. There it is. Yes. Big monitor. Yep. Chongus monitor. Do you have all three of those floppy drives hooked up, Javier? No. And actually, I think my, my external Apple III drive doesn't work. Oh. So I tried and it didn't work. So I, I got a, I'll take it with me to Kansas Fest. Good project. I have, I have a total of three Apple three floppy drives, like externals. Uh -huh. And one came with the Apple three. And then the other two I've had for a while. And I had no idea forever if they worked. So I had no way to test them. You're going to try them. And uh, I did. I tried them on the Apple three after I fixed it. And it turns out all three of them were good. Oh, good. I, I should send you mine. <laughs> Well, if your board is good, you can use the guts out of a disc too. It's the same thing. I have no idea. Yeah, I got. I got to figure it out. The thing is, as soon as I got um, Will's uh, Apple Three to Apple Two adapter and started using a floppy emu on the thing, I don't even yeah. There's no know that need. I'll use the floppy drive like a real floppy drive for anything. The problem is that the diagnostics that I have for the Apple Three are are very crappy, so I cannot even. You know, look for the external drive to test it. So, uh, I need like an adapter for an Apple II so I can test it from an Apple II and see if it works. 
Well, the way that I tested my externals is while I had the machine open, I just hooked up each drive to the internal connector oh. and then ran it as an as the drive one. Oh. I never actually hooked them up yeah. as an external. That could be. The connector is the same either way. If you have a, not a plus, if you have a regular three. This Frodo. Frodo. Yo, Frodo. Frodo Hello. Hello did plus. somebody say Apple three? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah yes. you got I your did. Apple three today, didn't one you? Of oh, us, yeah. One of us. One of us. One of us. It's powered up, and I actually have an Apple II disc booted up, and uh, it's actually running. Yay. Yeah. Did you change the reefer caps? Not yet. I, that's why I figured I'd leave it on during the show. Oh, yeah, Just leave it on. on. I want to see. I want to see you're, the smoke. You're gonna have a nice surprise. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just Explosions wanted to make sure else. it worked so that I could give the guy a review. Okay. Because uh, it was advertised as working. He had pictures of it working, so the I plugged it in and just tried it. It works. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. it actually works well. Smoke. My uh, my reef, my big reef, I was actually half exploded. It was kind of weird. I think it actually started sizzling when I was when the guy was showing it to me, and then I turned it yeah. off. Yeah. Um, but like when I, I tried to pull it out, it fell in half. Wow. Yeah, you got like cool stuff with yours. I didn't get anything with mine. All I got was two floppy disks. So the date on the side of this box that has all the actual Apple III system software, utilities, SOS, emulation, says five twenty five eighty three. That's late. I, yeah, I'm assuming that's when they bought it, because. Yeah. On the bottom of this is different than a lot of the ones I've seen. It only has two options on the bottom. It says 128K or 256K. And I've That's seen the other ones that had three. Mine only has 128 like And a 256 is checked. And then my yeah, this one bar, too. My space bar has a 256K sticker on it too. Yeah. See, like this other Apple III board I have has three checkboxes. I would love to know how What's somebody the third check was. Box? Is it empty? Uh, no. So this one says 128K on the bottom of this. So this serial number is 17,109. But what's the three checkboxes? Like what three RAMs? Oh, I'm sorry. 64K, 96K, and 128K. Those were oh, the three early. on this board. That's early then. Because yeah. mine is just 128 or 256. That's what mine is too. So that's what led me to believe the date on the box was right, 1983, because this definitely was a later one. This this one, it seems like, uh, being that it only had two RAM options on the the one here. Yeah, the one uh, you have yeah. earlier board. It probably has 12 volt RAM on that one too. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. Well, Actually, it didn't come with a board. Joe looked at the pictures at it for. Uh, it didn't it come, didn't with, the come with the RAM board, yet it has the 12 volt um, PAL chips in it. Chips, yeah. Like uh, it, maybe it was upgraded later to five volt to a five volt board to give it more RAM. That's quite yeah. possible. Well, it or, it came from that California. Or sales. the board was just thrown on any old pan, and they don't match. Oh, oh that could be too. I don't know. That's that's definitely possible. Because that would have came from uh, that uh, who done it, whatever that 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 Apple three board. The Tony guy. Yeah, uh, yeah. The yeah. I have the authority, or maybe not authority, to liquidate Tony's estate. Got it. Yeah, that guy. Because uh, <laughs> the Apple three, the full working Apple three I bought was from uh, Canada. It was shipped from Canada, and actually, it arrived completely intact, no damage, no nothing. I was shocked. Wow, from Canada, so everything the, is wrong The guy in actually Canada. packed oh, it well. Surprised. Hey, Frank, Sleepy says that he's got extra refas that you can install in there if you want. <laughs> oh, that way I can get the money shot. <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. I was thinking about just building a board that like, has AC going in, and then it has like 16 spots for refas, and I can install all my old paper refas. <laughs> and just, just like, and then like you can take, yes, which one will go first? Yeah. Uh, but it came with some books too. I got the Personal Computer Basics Reference Manual by Donald Sordillo. Uh, it says Atari, Apple, TRS-80 Color, TRS-80 Model 3, Commodore VIC-20, and IBM. Uh, that came with it. Uh, same thing with this VisiCalc Home and Office Companion. Oh, that's the killer uh, app for the Apple Hill. too. That was the killer app. Uh, 
the Apple Business User's Guide, which at the time cost $15.50. The price tag is still on it. Uh, and then yeah, I've got the VisiCalc 3 for the Apple 3. That is Mock cool. Set. That is awesome. You need to double check and see if that's archived. If it's not, you need to archive yeah, it. Yeah, it's I haven't completely played VisiCalc for Apple 3 online anywhere. Uh, this is PFS uh, personal filing system for the Apple 3. Nice. And it's got the uh, computer land price tag of one forty nine ninety five on it still. I wonder if that's okay, as bad as the Apple II version. For that. I'm sorry, what happened? I said I wonder if that oh, PFS stuff is bad on the Apple III as it did on the Apple II. Let me, let me show something. Yeah. Well, this one's the PFS personal report system as well. It was originally one twenty five, marked down to ninety nine ninety five. What a land. bargain! That's a bargain. <laughs> what is that? Magic Set Plus. Yeah, this is a What's Magic Sack. Oh, Magic, magic sack. sack Plus. Magic that um uh oh, um, that's, a, that's a bad okay. name. <laughs> what does that do? Go ahead. Yes, I have. Hey, honey. Hey, honey, you want to see my Magic Sack too? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, yes, Sloopy. I'm I have a Trina. Trina hasn't said anything. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. I'm just. Your, I, what I'm is just that? Say enough funny stuff for her to decide that yeah, she's what, uh, what is it that waking that up to stop in. It's actually an emulator. Hold on, let me put it up. Uh, there it is. Oh, I see it. It's yeah, a, it's it a Where does it go? Where does it plug into? A Macintosh into? emulator for an Atari machine, Atari ST. Oh no, kidding! That's pretty cool. Yeah. So Last Macintosh game. emulator. What the hell's going on with my lights? <laughs> Gosh. So you put what Mac ROMs in there, and then it says like, "Yeah, you put Mac ROMs over here, and then you okay. know a battery, and uh, it goes." I haven't tested it. I've been working on this like for three years. Oh. So, and from yeah. the Atari uh, SD is a is a sixty eight thousand, right? So yeah, this is sixty eight thousand. This this is okay. not magic sack. For, so from the, the people that made uh, Atari, from the people did that this. made VisiCalc. Desktop and, uh, plan. They, yeah, they it, it's it. financial planning. They sold it like it was faster than an Apple than a Macintosh, and cheaper. That's for. crazy. Yeah. Except There's you had to buy a that. Mac to get the ROMs. Mm -hmm. Well, legally, you know, nobody did that. They just yeah, copied. It's, it's like, hey, buddy, can yeah. I copy your really, really expensive computer? Yeah. <laughs> I Business and financial. That. Like I knew a guy who had one of those. Uh, what was that? Uh, the first portable Mac that was a third party? Um, Colby? Something like that. I knew a guy who got one of those, and he convinced somebody else to let him open his Mac Plus and, and clone the ROM. Instead of buying the whole Mac Plus motherboard. As the VisiCalc, it has the pocket reference guide and everything in here. Nice. <laughs> The pocket reference guide yes, is perfect man. for your magic sack. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> that is funny. You know, oh, look, it only... comes with stickers for VisiCalc. The... Apple 3 stickers that say Apple 3 and VisiCalc. Neat. Three. The only original. Send Apple those to did... Javier so he can clone them and put them on his website. Yep. The only original Apple 3 software I have is a copy of How to Use the Keyboard. Hi, everybody. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> I tuck my shirt back in like a weirdo. Oh. Huh. They give you two copies of the program disc. Yeah, so you don't have to... For the VisiCalc 3. Them. Yeah, that was common yeah. back then. They yeah. Other companies either did that or they would tell you, copy this before you use it and use the copy. Because yeah. floppies would fail. Um, I got 100 blank floppies coming in the mail. I right. just discovered ADP Pro, uh, the ADT Pro, you know, just a little while ago. So I need now to get I, my uh, applesauce. I want to be able to copy some stuff. I have uh, the original SOS discs here. The way I copy like stuff this. is I just boot from a floppy emu, and then I use copy 2 plus or copy 3 plus, and then oh, that's a good idea. copy from that image to a real floppy. To a real disc? Uh, I've or, got, so Will, Will's thingy's coming. The adapter uh -oh. that you bought. 
I yeah, it works perfectly. Can... The only thing is you need a you need a I think it's a twenty six pin cable to go from the motherboard to the thingy. Oh, so it doesn't come with the wire for the thingy? Well, he gave me it for free, so maybe oh. he includes that, but the one I got didn't have it. I don't know. It hasn't come in the mail yet, so I'm not really sure. Oh, I happen to have a spare one because uh, the Apple IIe e, um, keyboard is the mm -hmm. same connector as, yeah, uh, as the yeah. Apple III floppy drive, coincidentally. And I have lots so, of them. So, selector start slot four. I don't know what that means. Someone wrote it on one of the disks. Oh, yeah, it has all the system yeah, I do, utilities I do have the and disk, Thomas. emulation and whatnot. The manuals, so, the quick start. Uh, Will oh, says yeah. it doesn't, doesn't come with a cable, Will says. Okay, so I got to figure out how to get a cable. So, yep. Fabo, when are you, you going to be making bar Garth candles? If you don't have a cable, you'd have to remove one from an uh, Apple free drive. Let me let me see okay. if I can print one right now. Hold on. Hmm. I'll be back. Frank, I can I'll send you back. the right cable if you need one. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't have one. I didn't know. I thought I'd just uh, hook it up kind of like how the uh, Emu does with the little ribbon cable. Yeah. The, Wherever um, I put that. The Apple IIe Maybe. keyboard is the same exact cable. I just yanked one off one of my spares. All installed. Now to do resistors. Yeah, I got the Boop. Apple, uh, the Emu with the regular adapter, and then I've got the one for the uh, 2C. Yeah, you'll, you'll need I, to say 26 like to 26 ID. Bye, Javier. ID. Okay, 26 to 26. Bye, Javier. Straight. He got lost. Must have gone I'm here. Here. I'm just doing something. Oh, Thomas no. Said magic sack. <laughs> that, <laughs> is, print file. that is funny. I'll print it later. She's here and she's in fine form. She's just in the chat. <laughs> uh. Okay, what's next? I need a resistor doodle of 470. You're not a real nerd unless you buy your resistors in bulk. Huh. Who you doesn't really buy your resistor in bulk? Yeah, five thousand at a time, baby. Damn. So how do you? So let's say, for example, I don't have the applesauce thing yet. Uh, how? What is there a better way to um, copy these original discs off to images? If you're, if you're lucky and they're not copy protected, you can do exactly how Adam said, and just use. With um, that software, copy two yeah, plus just use the software. On, a, on an Apple copy three, three yeah. yeah, or copy three plus. Okay. Awesome. I mean, yeah, you can copy uh, Apple three discs on an Apple two. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're the they're the same. They're effectively Pro DOS formatted. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. To me, I would okay. just boot it. I would I would set up a two E with um, a floppy emu on what like on the boot drive, a mm -hmm. real floppy drive on the drive two. Okay. And you boot the floppy emu to copy two plus. And then put your Apple three disk in the external drive, and then and when you do go to copy, you say go from uh, slot six drive two that source to slot six okay. drive one, and then you select a blank image on your floppy emu, which you have to put on it first. Okay. And just write it to that blank image, and then that should create okay. you an image of that disk. That way, I could get you guys copies of some of these ones too. Yep. Yes. To try on yours, like the Visical three and stuff, just to see if it works. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I, yeah. I so I can do it on I can well you can I can do it, it on your the two C right yeah the two C okay yeah you as long as you can hook a floppy up emu up. on drive one and a and a real floppy on drive two you should be able, if you have that disc switcher on that yeah you should be able yeah to, yeah uh, it's a very nice Apple two C have there by the way too. Well, so it, exactly things. exactly I, I got that from uh, somebody on Apple three. three I love this thing I had it uh, booted up with that. Um, What's that big uh, software package? The total, total replay total or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has all kinds of stuff, but yeah, this thing looks so nice and clean. Nice. I would love to see if Total Replay will boot on an. <laughs> I got it from Adam. Well, once I have the floppy emo thing, uh, the adapter that uh, Will made, then I can try it. Well, I still you need, need the cable. This. In theory, yeah. I can do it. I have the person <laughs> to do it, but oh, yeah, that thing is <laughs> that crazy. Is a neat I like case. it. <laughs> yeah, so I just have that little thingy sticking out now, Adam. 
for the uh oh, yeah the switch yeah yeah okay well it's funny yeah, that I, I put that, that switcher i have that 2c i got where somebody mounted some kind of switch on the face of it oh yeah and i was thinking i was gonna like bondo it shut and, and repaint the machine or something now i'm thinking maybe i should just put a drive select switch there yeah, yeah. I put the that whole, as your I mean, as your the drive. holes are already drilled in it. I might as well just use it. Why not? Exactly, exactly. I have a t- that's Apple actually not a bad idea. I have an Apple II that had somebody put a hole for a toggle switch to switch between uh, thirteen and sixteen sector uh, discs. Ooh. So I just recreated that. So I put, I put a toggle switch in, and now it does what the guy back in like probably nineteen eighty did to was trying to do. That's pretty funny. And it's ugly, but whatever. Hey, if it works. Two hundred and twenty-three. So, how many components are on these boards? A lot. <laughs> Too many to count. A lot. I honestly didn't even count. <laughs> The RAM is the single largest most, or the single largest expense. It's easily like a quarter of the cost of the entire project. Darth says don't copy that floppy. Send it to Garth to copy that floppy. (laughs) (laughs) One million components. Yeah, uh, Joe, do you remember, I don't know if it was Sunday stream? That's when the Sunday before last, when I talked about that uh, Performa five seventy five for eighty bucks. Uh, sure. It made it <laughs> completely intact, no issues. Lies, pictures, or it didn't happen. Yeah, <laughs> I, can, I can do you one better. Ooh! It actually now drop it, drop it on the floor. Well, wow, hang the on. I wish. I will show you its cousin that did not make it so well. Uh-oh. <laughs> that one made it 100% fine. But for some reason... One of those, somebody. I, did I give you one, oh, Joe? These are so heavy. A 575, yeah. This one did not. Oh. oh crap. Good. Hang on. Throw it away. Hang on. I hate those things. Let's see. Oh, Look at the side. That <laughs> awesome. Hurts. That's what That's we call good. parts. <laughs> Yeah, you take the floppy yeah. and the CD-ROM out and the motherboard, and the rest goes in the bin. Yep, yeah. And it's got a couple bullet wounds, it looks like, on the opposite side. Okay. You gotta holy send it cow, to, that is heavy. You know what you got to do? You got to send it to, to um. You got to send Ron? it to Steve. St- Steve likes strays. Well, you got to <laughs> send it to Ron so he can CD <laughs> scan it. Yeah. yeah. Well, what's funny is uh, I was saying something to Ron about it earlier. He goes, he goes, there was nothing lost there. Don't worry about it. He goes, people throw those on the free shelf at VCF all the time. <laughs> I tried to take the front bezel off one of those, and it, like, disintegrated my hand. No, no, this is super brittle, too. That's the same thing. That's That has to be why it fell apart. I also pushed the it, uh, CD-ROM eject, and it just fell inside the machine. Yeah, just a snap. <laughs> right off. Frank, that's like that quadra you sent me. Um, oh, I my God, yes. It, and it, it shattered into 100 pieces. Every time I pick it up and, and move it three inches to get to something else, there's more plastic laying on my floor. Well, that's all right. Just save the power <laughs> supply and the rest. Because the, so, the power supply works. Okay. My Quadra 800 is like rock solid. What, the 700? No, my 800. I have an early 800. Mm. And it's not made of that plastic. It's made out of the older plastic. It's got to be because none... It, like I can yeah. lift the thing by the bezels and they don't they don't crack. Wow. Huh. Well now I want to plug in this 575 and see if it powers on. <laughs> Boom. I didn't I didn't even try it. Explosion. Oh wait. Oh where are my resistor doodles? I love resistor doodles. Remember you need a keyboard to power it on. This is a one pack. Like this. Keyboard too. Yeah. yeah. I need to find another 2GS keyboard. I have one for you. I, I do have a bunch of... I have at least six or eight 2GS spares over there. So I, I'll send you one if you need one. 
no cool. you don't. I appreciate that. I got that, yep, that said, ROM one. That ROM one that worked uh other than the power supply, like looks new otherwise. So Yeah. But I would like to have, I know, I, I have a some keyboard demos. for it. I get people like uh here. like Garth if he's using a TGS keyboard on the wrong computer. Boo. <laughs> Faster, okay. faster, faster. Let's let's see what happens here. I'm already going pretty gosh darn fast. Trust me. How many hours is this one of these speed. together? Um, I will let you know if we're done by midnight. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I should order a pizza. And now everybody, uh, everybody who bought one uh, pre-built will understand why the price for the pre-built is so high because yeah. it's just hours of labor. I yeah. thought it was reasonable. I didn't think it was that high. <clears throat> no, it's not high. Oh, you look at that. Welcome to Macintosh. Oh, it's got, it's got RAM doubler installed. That's great. Oh, you nice. need that. RAM doubler is important. <laughs> that doesn't put anywhere in chair on your hard drive at all. Look at that. It's actually booting. <laughs> Best $80 I think I've ever spent. That's nice. But if it works to take now, bets, tomorrow they... it won't. Who wants to take bets when the uh, when the drive <laughs> bearing in that starts making <laughs> noises? Now, like every '90s Mac I've bought in the last three years, if it boots, it works for a couple days and then it just goes. Yep. And now the hard drives are like, "What do you mean working again? We've been gotten, off for two decades." I've gotten to the point where when I buy it, like when I got the Quadra 800, before I even turned it on. I had a blue SCSI ready and hooked up. So yep. that when it, if it booted, I could Copy immediately Copy everything over? It. Yeah. Yep. Do you, do you think I have idea. enough 16-pin sockets? No, you need some Not more. Not at all. Oh, I need more? Barely. <laughs> okay. I, I, I got more. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Okay, let's see what Luckily, we got. Luckily, they cost only got... nine cents a piece, so, you know. That's a lot. We got office on here. Oh, uh, let's take uh, the... take a look here. We... Uh, it's running system software 7.5, 12 megs of RAM. Let's see what else this thing's got. Hmm. Conversations. Who writes down their conversations? <clears throat> All of the sockets. I've got Rush stuck in my head for the past several days. Oh, Microsoft no. Word version 6.0.1. Well, if you got Rush stuck, then do it faster. <laughs> this, okay, so this says Ronald Cohen Gorilla Foundation. What? Is that a real thing? I have no that's idea. Who, that's who this was registered. Com, baby. Ooh, yeah, I'm going to have to look it up now. Oh, yeah, Coco the Gorilla. This actually has a bunch of stuff about Coco the Gorilla on here, the Word documents. Let's go. Hang on. If that's now the case, I'm that's Google actually, it. that might, you might want to like really, truly check the prominence of that because that information might be historically significant. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, Zoo List. This has all like zoological stuff on it. Transport okay. estimates for cost. Too this came people. from California. Ooh. Cage 2. <laughs> Electric book of Lou. <laughs> <laughs> That's silly. Um, sorry, there's just this one. It's that Pavlovian thing. It's just programmed into your brain, you know. Santa Clara SPCA. Uh, donor list. Gorilla's favorite foods. I want to know. Logs of their activity. Is it Gorilla's favorite foods. Look. Human. So hang on. That's interesting. So hang on. Let's uh let's actually reopen that and There's look up this there. thing. <laughs> yeah, so it says This was from uh Conversations with Coco the Gorilla, April 9th, 1999 with Dina Pettit. Coco and Dina are watching a video and they actually document everything in the conversation that the two had. Same thing with other people, too. Ty Robb, Jim Atkins. I'm sure Coco makes more sense than a lot of people huh. I know. Yeah. Well, that, no, yeah. This, no, that, it meant like Coco the Gorilla. That's really I think interesting. So did Javier. 
<laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, if anybody's in the chat right now saying, oh, my God, why is Joe bending over all those legs on those chips? My response is, yeah. I'm building it, not you. Shut up. Gorillas in the zoos. Okay, there's a question, Joe, for you from Athens. Ronald Cohen Gorilla Foundation. Yeah, read it off for me there, Javier, if you can. Yep. In my beautiful English. Joe, where do you source your parts also? Do you know any good place to get 27 CXXX Eprams? Okay, so where do I store my parts? Source. Source. Oh, source my parts. Lots of different places. If it's if they are parts that, how can you, how can I say, are just normal, still available, non-rare stuff, I usually get my parts en masse from DigiKey and Mauser. Um, I can kind of fight them against each other a little bit um, when I order stuff in bulk. Um, okay, that's fight. interesting. If... Uh, if it, a good place to get 27, that one's empty, to get 27C uh, ROM chips, EPROMs, DigiKey and Mouse are still, those are, they, those are still available, you can still get them. Um, rarer stuff, that's, how can I say, a little bit more vintage, but not necessarily hard to get. The place I like to go is Jameco. They're a little expensive, they have shipping minimums and things like that, but they have some, you know, so that's, that's a thing. If you need to find really, really hard to find stuff, I would go to UT source. That is U T S O U R C E dot net. That's where I got all of the Ram for this project. Because the Ram that it was, that these use is not made anymore. So you have to find a new old stock. And they know how to source all that. I've gone to James Cup for some things that are hard to find, but I've also found a few weirder items at Newark or Newark. Newark, yeah. Newark's a good resource too. Oh my god. I used to get their catalogs. They were ginormous. Newark Electronics. Yeah, they had um Yes. They have some old some old dip chips I needed. I couldn't find anywhere else. Did you just say dip chips? Dip chips. Oh, okay. Dip chips. Okay. <laughs> chips and dip. Chips and dip. I had yeah. chips and dip for dinner. So yeah. I really dinner. do. I really yeah. do think this actually did belong to the foundation because it actually has work schedules for everybody, and all these observation logs and stuff on here. I don't people that like is computers. awesome. So I I googled it that uh, Ronald Cohen Gorilla Foundation, and it's actually coco.org. Like the actual Coco the Gorilla. So it says we're sad. We're, the very first page on here says we're, we're sad to share that Dr. Ron Cohen, our co-founder and photo slash videographer, passed away at his home Friday, September 16th, 2022. Oh. And everything on this computer is registered to them. And I have a feeling that computer was probably his. And it went out with his. Um, with the his, timing uh, makes sense. His, his estate. Yeah, because everything on here is work schedules, observations of the actual gorillas and everything, conversations, the whole nine yards. Wow. So I'm going to shut this off. Yep. Sh so I can copy the hard drive. Yep. Yeah. You let should... me plug in this busted one. You it should came from the same or... place. Contact them. Well, that's what I was going to say. I'm going to email them. Yeah, contact them and, and see what they want to do with that. I think it's important information. Yeah, because it's got a lot of information on there. If it's not important, at least it's historical, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I will know. Holy crap, it turns on. For anybody who uh, <clears throat> anybody does projects like this and they're uh, sourcing sockets, always make sure even if it costs you a little bit more money to source oh, your sockets from a place like Mouser or DigiKey or a good high quality source. And the reason is, oh, yeah. is I found a source for sockets that's really cheap. 
like they're like two cents a piece instead of nine cents a piece. But the problem is solder doesn't stick to the pins. Uh. And so it takes me way longer to solder, solder them. We'll see here in a minute once I get this fully stuffed. I can literally drag solder like this along whole lines of pins and just do it super duper fast. Yeah. That's probably where they source the ones for the Apple III then. Same yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. You know it. Mm -hmm. The crap will So this other, ah! this other one that was in crap shape, it's actually booting too, and it came from the exact same place. So I want to see if it has foundation data on it too. Yeah. Uh. What's crazy is the picture is really good. The case is crap, but the picture is really good. <laughs> okay, let's take a look here and see what we got. Here I am building a Titan set when I really should be fixing Frodo's motherboards. What the hell? Oh, whoops, sorry. I, I didn't use myself this time. No, it's fine. It's just like, <laughs> what is that noise? So this one is running System 7.6, 41 megs of RAM. Uh, let's see what's on here. A couple of those. Well, yep, Marilyn at the Gorilla Foundation. So wow. yeah, this came from there too. Neat. Yep. So both of these computers, so I'm going to have to reach out to them and find out uh, if they would like a copy of the data for one. Yes. Or if they know if they sold the computers. It's like, those were stolen I'm from curious. us from our storage storage warehouse. Can we have yeah. them back? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we just uh, alerted the police and they're on, your, on their way to your house. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think, I don't think it would That's just what Frank needs right twice. now. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I don't think this would make the journey back to California. <laughs> oh, more fell off just by touching 4. it. 4.7 puff. 4.7 puff! It's in here somewhere. Oh, yeah. So this is, these <laughs> are actually literally, these are, okay, listen to this. So this is actually from March 1995. The person that entered this data, the date, the exact time, Coco signed that she was thirsty at 12.30 p.m. on 3-1-1995. Uh, she wanted to know the time, toilet, you, Chase, there, UK9, uh, like every single word that Coco, Coco love. So yeah, every single observation, like they have think, them on spreadsheets. I think Coco passed away already, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. Uh, but uh, there was tons of famous people that I'm sure are probably documented on these spreadsheets that actually spent time with Coco, like Robin Williams and several other places, people. Wow. Yeah, that actually spent time with Coco the Gorilla. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, here's all the media, awesome. media relations stuffs on here, new exhibits, articles. Here we go. Yeah, so there's a Drag lot. Solder. Of here. See how fast that goes when you can just drag solder the pins? Oh, here you go. Employment ads, emails, correspondence, photos, personal journals. Captain's log. Holy crap. <laughs> Captain's log, supplemental. The Metamucil. National Lord. Geographic. There's there's invoices from National Geographic for uh, the guy's photos. There's all kinds of stuff on here. Nice. So, yeah, I'm going to have to reach out to them and ask them. Isn't it crazy where our hobby takes us? Yep. Yeah, no kidding. Like, you just, like, this this random stuff. It's just like, I'm having fun in my basement. And, oh, yeah, by the way, the most, yeah. I have the computer from the foundation associated with the most uh, um, well-known gorilla yeah. in world history. Yep. And I just yeah. happen to have it on my desk. It's like, ah! So, right here. Here's an invoice the Gorilla Foundation sent to National Geographic Magazine. May 21st, 1998, for pictures that he'd taken. Various photos of Coco the Gorilla. See itemized list and attached letters. Please remit the photo use fee of $300 per Im image inside, $600 per full-size cover photo, and or $300 per 8-inch size cover photo used in Geo Magazine. 
The terms are for one-time use only with copyright and photo credit assigned to Ron Cohen, the Gorilla Foundation. So yeah, I mean, there's, there's all kinds of stuff on here. Holy cow. But yeah, both of these computers came from the same place. Coco the Gorilla. Coco. Coco Gorilla. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Maybe Coco oh, never actually thought of that. It. What's that? They let Coco handle that map. That's why it looks like that. Yeah, it must be. <laughs> like, remember those Samsonite he ads? Throws it, yeah, Coco threw it <laughs> and then signed Coco Hate. Coco Hate? Yeah. <laughs> you want the original Code Monkey? Coco Want Window. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. Well, I have that Quadra 700 with a big hole in the front. I'm just going to put a big... Uh, Dinosaur sticker over it and be done. Yeah. Yeah. Put a retro pair for a pair around uh, sticker. That is it. crazy. Actually, I was thinking about putting a Jurassic Park sticker, like make one that says like property uh, of Jurassic Park. Oh, that's great. Like an asset tag, a Jurassic uh, Park yeah. asset uh, tag. That'd uh, be awesome. That would be, that would be awesome. Yeah. Logo. You didn't say the magic word. Yeah, here's oh, their database of, of donors. They have Credit an actual uh, Claris Works database. Credit card sure numbers? You, oh, I'm sure sorry. Have, no, it's FileMaker uh, Pro. FileMaker Pro. Can you make dox sure them? Clone, clone that Pro. stuff, though. Make sure you clone the whole thing. Well, I'm going to, yeah. Because, I, yeah, this has all kinds of stuff on it. Well, my Quad 800 had all kinds of medical stuff that oh, should not crap. have been there. It was basically a, a, a huge HIPAA violation. But oh, I believe it. I have saved all the programs and killed all the patient stuff. Question would be, was it abandoned before HIPAA existed? I think so. I think the last files written were in 1999. I'm not, I'm not sure so what year HIPAA So then it's HIPAA. not technically a HIPAA violation. Yeah. Well, I didn't read any of those files, so they're just gone. In fact, Adam did read any of those mm -hmm. files. Look, at Will says I could put a K-Mac Vintage sticker on it. Everybody yeah. wants me to advertise their thing on my computer. <laughs> Make your own stickers, man. Charge them. I, I don't need a sticker. My stickers are just Apple stickers. There you go. Here's their budget and funding from 1996. $1.192 million. That's not a lot of money. Here's total assets, $2.5 million. You probably shouldn't be advertising such things live on my stream, sir. Yeah. From the yeah. 90s? Still. None of these people are alive. Please don't. Yeah, you never know. Yeah, you better not. Yeah, please. Oh, look, Retro Techie's here. Yay. Retro Techie! <laughs> Somebody's sending me a package from Canada. Blame Canada for health care. Oh, wait. It's, um, I'm too lazy to make my own ROM, so somebody sent me some Apple C ROMs. I got stickers. I have one of those. But you got the black I one? have 50 of those or some. No, but I have one of the stickers and a black Sharpie. Oh, okay. <laughs> do, 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 What do you all think of Sunday's stream? I liked it. I didn't get to see all of it. I had to go after a while, but I got through everybody saying who they were, that part, which took oh, actually took the whole normal amount of time. And that was uh, really cool. Everybody was awesome that was on that stream. Yeah, the only annoying thing was that certain Trina person was always talking. <laughs> I'm falling asleep. <laughs> Trina knows how to find people. You know, she yeah. got Kat on the stream uh, and, and Kate, and that's great. And then she's like, oh yeah, and here are a whole bunch of entrepreneurs and people who work for NASA. Deal with Damn. it. Damn! Like that was I like Cat's headphones. There's a I have a family member who has the same headphones. So nice, yeah. The cat headphones. I learned a lot. 
Yes. Because <laughs> shameless, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've been double thinking the way I think about people ever since that. Yeah, honestly. Trina. <laughs> she falls right. asleep, Trina. Don't worry. We can say anything about her. <laughs> Trina's icky. Yeah, I got mood lighting. Mood lighting. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, the lighting options in this room are just. It's a hotel good. room. I mean. <clears throat> well, there's at least five uh, light bulbs in this one room. This is like the outer sweet seating area part of the room, and all of the lights suck. And I do stuff like I'm in a closet. Solder all the pins, solder all the pins. It's okay, it only takes three hours to do. <laughs> Trust me, it's cheaper yeah. for both me and my customers for me to solder these manually. Are you making um, up words to the Nintendo music? What? <laughs> yeah. 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 To uh, the, uh, it's the, in the interlude music for Pac-Man. So, oh, Pac-Man. So I went into the Domino's app and I spent all this time putting in the address, picking out the food I wanted, and then it says at the end to check out, uh, we don't deliver to your address. <clears throat> oh, you, you guys heard about that that thing that somebody registered uh, the sound of a game loading into a, a ZX, ZX Spectrum? So when they played on online, you took it down because it was a violation and copyright mu and music. Somebody copyrighted the sound of an of something occurring. Right, loading. Well, they they claimed that they had a copyright on it. That happens on YouTube all the time. People will claim For everything. They own something that they don't. Exactly. And then they'll get you copyright notice, and then they'll either demand money or they'll. But the problem is video. that yeah, there's. The There's YouTube no process don't... within YouTube internally yeah. to confirm that the people who say they're the copyright holder actually are. Yeah, there was some guy who went and like said he had a copyright on some old music that nobody actually owned. Yeah. Because he found it in a lot of videos. And then he's like, oh, I'm a record company. And I own this. And he was collecting. He was doing the thing where it's like, oh, you can keep the video up, but we're going to take all the money. And then he was getting hundreds of thousands of dollars. Going. And nobody ever checked if this guy really owned it. What did I told you guys? Trina was just falling asleep. <laughs> Her normal state. <laughs> Trina is awesome. Trina is awesome. She but put she's together one of the sleeping. coolest retro repair roundups we've ever had. <laughs> Not one of the coolest. The coolest. I don't want to sing a song, but I'll just say I like Trina. Me too. That's what I'm always um, And... Jeremy asked me if it's stormy. I don't know. I'm in the hotel, but right now it says it's 97 degrees and thunderstorm. Huh? Ah, where are you? I'm in Austin, Texas. Oh. Hello, Texas. Yeah, oh. in Florida, it's also raining like crazy. I'm going to walk over to the window and see what it looks like outside. Because it was super humid, so the fact that there would be a thunderstorm <clears throat> is totally plausible. <laughs> crazy. I just find a solution to my hotel Wi-Fi woes. This room actually has an Ethernet jack in it. <laughs> <laughs> Dink! Problem solved. Yeah, it's hilarious too because when you go to use it, it still makes you sign in like to their wireless. Yeah. But it's just to, to their network. That's why I'm using a laptop for this. Hey, hey guys, guys, do, guys do, do you think Frank has tape? Frank, I'm trying it. to keep the com computer together long enough to copy the data. Oh <laughs> <laughs> that is it, it may fall apart before I get it done. So oh, soldered. Uh, I'm getting 28 megabit download from here. That's not too bad. 28 for megabits? Hotel. That's actually not that bad. And then I'm getting 23 up. 
Yeah. Synchronous? Wow. It, well, synchronous, probably 50 meg circuit that they probably allocate half to us. <clears throat> We're putting 100 meg more in. annoying than cutting one of these and having the pins you cut off disappear far, far, far away. I found them. Uh, we put 100 meg circuits as the minimum for our sites now. For work. 100 meg circuits are considered fast where we are. Yeah. Uh, and we were doing 50s, but they decided when we started adding phones in, we're doing our own voice phones now. They're like, oh, 50 is too slow. we got to have 100. <coughs> Where's the little cable doodles? I don't know. Little header pins in right here. Javier, your, uh, your retrobrite has gotten too extreme there. I can see right through the computer. Yeah, I think I went too far <laughs> this time. Yeah, I've got one of those shells. I haven't built it yet. I love it. Mine is one of the like defective ones that has like you know, but it's not perfect. But I don't Mark's know why my, are cheap. my my buttons aren't working. They're not touching that the button. So I haven't tried those, but I have the ones from the green case, and I had to modify them slightly to work. They were yeah, I may maybe needing to do that too. Yeah, it's not touching it. Yep. Jeremy, I'm leaving here Saturday morning. Okay, let's stuff some chips. And to do this, I'm going to get another board, a blank board to remind me where the chips go. Yay. What is this doing? Why is it flashing? Chips. Ahoy. Oh, there's a amber alert. Thank you for telling me that. You don't need to see my wallet. Ram. Where's my chip squeezer? Chip squeezer, where did it go? Here it is. Chip squeezer, where did it go? <laughs> Bye, Trina. Bye, Trina. We love you. I keep forgetting I'm in Central, so everything is later in the East. So, Joe, does that card have, or does one of those cards have a bunch of RAM on it? Yep, the 3 plus 2 has 128 kilobytes of RAM on it. So it uses all of that just for the 2E part, yep. and then your other RAM's all open? Uh, yes. So can you run both things at once, or is it just, I don't understand why it needs RAM if it's just taking over the machine. It. It's one of the ways that it bypasses the program limitations. It provides its own RAM bank because the Apple III, when you put the computer, in order to even use this, you have to put the Apple III into 2E or into 2 emulation mode. Okay. Um, even with these, you just use the special Titan version of it. And when you're in 2 emulation mode, the machine at a very low level blocks <clears throat> off access to certain banks ram like you can't get more than 48 ever so it's such 48k is the hard limit right so, what so that's this why i can't boot protoss on an apple 3 because it doesn't yes. have 64k okay exactly so what this is doing is it bypasses all of that bs and it just gives you your own 128k bank of ram and it's like all right here we are so when you're in 2e mode do you know how it handles the slot addressing um they are handled as slot one, two, three, and four. So if I put a card that works in a 2E into, say, slot four, yep. it should just behave like a 2E with a card in slot four. As far as I understand, yes. Okay. Once I get this done, maybe we can put a mouse card in that slot and see if it works. And uh, boot like... Um, I, I'm fairly certain an Apple II mouse card is too big to fit in a three. Oh, well, I've got the Bitmouse card, which is a lot smaller. Yeah, that'll fit. Uh -huh. uh, my goal is to try to get a Lyra card working. Yes. Okay, so we need 153s. I need one, two, three, four, five. I need five of those. Where are those? One, two, three, four, five. Do, 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 do. 
Now you're singing Tron. What? Tron. No, I was singing the interscene bump music from Star Trek. Oh, I thought you were singing. No. Okay. You ever watch? Uh, you ever watch Star Trek One and it, uh, with the all the bumpers intact, so it has the orchestra and the intermission. No. The laser just left those in, and I like it. I have a day. That's how I saw it. <clears throat> first saw it on seventy millimeter. Like you went and sat in the theater, and the lights went down, and then you got like fifteen minutes of the orchestra from the, of the songs from the movie. Yeah. And then the movie played, and then like an hour and a half in, it was like intermission, and it would play music, and then you could go out and get more popcorn and stuff. Cool. And so, because what you want to do is you want to make Star Trek one even longer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need two one thirty eights. These chips in my bins over here are not in any particular order. They're in the order I removed them from the packaging. So. <laughs> It's it takes a little long to find the parts. So these two cards go in two slots, and then they have is that ribbon cable go between the two cards? Yes. Okay. Sort of like one of those video cards with the SLI or whatever. Yes. <laughs> but it, but at two megahertz. And I need. We're gonna do an eighty-six. For LS8. Hi, I, I found a resistor on my shirt. <laughs> um, Joe, Jeremy asked, what is the maximum RAM that can be installed in an Apple III? Didn't the maximum that RAM question? that can be installed in Apple III would be 512 kilobytes, but you have to have special hacked uh, versions of your software to be able to use it. Mm. Figures. One thirty nine. One thirty nine. I want to know what happens if I put a two e um, one megabyte card in one of the slots. One sixty one. It won't actually physically fit when the case is on, but why does that have to stop me? Like a like a a slinky or something. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That's where the power goes. 374. 374. Yeah, I ended up with like four extra slinky cards. You know what you use those for, right? RAM disk? Yep. No. A source for RAM oh. for re uh, repairing your Apple IICs with MT RAM. Oh, yeah. I actually uh, already ripped off all the chips except I left 256K on them. Um, those fit well into a 2GS card, too. Yeah. The Garth wants to know what would an Apple two, Apple three C look like. I don't know. Uh, Why don't you take a take a two C and fill the whole entire inside with lead, and then it would be about the right weight. No, it has to be lead with a whole bunch of five watt um, uh, twenty ohm resistors with one hundred twenty yeah. volts going through it as well. Very yeah, and make sure that the input is four hundred eighty volts. <laughs> Oh, where's this chip? Right here. Did you guys ever see the photo of, or the Photoshop of what a PowerBook G5 would have looked like? It was like a PowerBook G4, but it was like four inches thick. <laughs> Picture. And it has fins on the bottom because it's basically just a gigantic freaking Yeah, it basically looked like a briefcase with it with a folding up screen off the top of it. Like six fan ports. <laughs> Beige Dyson sphere. <laughs> that is going in backwards. I think Garth was on the PowerBook G5 team, right? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> 109. 109. Where's this chip? Where are you? I do want to figure out how to, a, a way to easily switch between the internal Apple Tree floppy drive and the floppy emu, kind of like that uh, big mess of wires. Switcher. 
Yeah, there's got to be just one pin on that cable that tells it which okay. one. Um, now, when you I think I'm mostly probably going to end up booting from a floppy emu, but I still want to be able to boot from a real floppy if I can uh -huh. without opening the lid. The internal drive doesn't work. Game IO jump up. What? Your mom? Your, your internal floppy does not work? I oh, know. I've got four working Apple uh, three floppy drives, including the internal. I just want it so that if I want to boot from the internal real drive, I can, but I want to be able to just flip the switch and do the floppy. Email. Oh, so you have to unplug the internal drive to use the external with the floppy? Email? Yeah. Is yeah, it's like an Apple did? II. It's, it's like an Apple II or t a 2C. Okay. You have to boot from drive one. So gotcha. if you hook up the floppy emu to the internal port, then your internal drive is now not hooked up. Um, the way I'm doing it right now is I've got the cable from the motherboard sort of wrapped over into where the, the slots are. And then yeah. I've got Will's adapter there. And then I've got the cable from the real floppy also going there. So I can take the lid off and just swap the cable. So it works, but it's not elegant. <laughs> they screwed well, up my adapters. What happened? The holes are too small. Karina? What? Karina left. That's why. Yeah, she left. What adapter is that? This is a little uh, jumper that goes in the um, goes in the game I.O. port. If you don't have a joystick plugged in, this has to be plugged in there. Oh, weird. This, yeah. So, I pulled the back off of the Apple III just for uh -huh, the uh, power supply. And we were uh, yeah. definitely tempting fate there. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you can see it, but that Rifa is correct. Yep. Sig yeah, that's, my, that's the Rifa on mine that was like 90% percent Javier, wrong. make him big so people can see. Okay. Yeah, that's that's yeah. significant crack on that yeah, side. Right um, yeah, that would have gone if he had left that on a little while. Yeah. That's the point. I think it's a 0 0.22 microfarad. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that was the only one on mine that looked like it was damaged, but then there should be two point ones. Yeah, here's a oh. point one right here on this end. Yeah, and also look up by the transformer, closer to where the point two two is. I didn't notice that, that one at first. Like right where your thumb is kinda. So this one it's the one must be covered with the uh one, not, no, further towards the back. There should be another one. Transformers more than mm. meets the eye. I've got one here. There's a there's like a, a heat sink, and then to the left of the heat sink, there should be like right there where you just put your finger to the left where you put your finger. Yeah. You see it? Right here. No, huh? Okay. No, well, I'm trying to point at my own screen. Yeah, they're right next to the left of that, that transistor. Uh, it's at the top of the screen right now. At the top of the screen right now on the left. On this side. Oh, this right here. Side. Yeah. Yeah, hiding. I yeah, didn't the, see it at first. That yeah, that's the, one I, that's the one I totally missed on, man. Like, I, I like, recapped yeah. the whole thing and then put it in back in the shell, and then I noticed <laughs> that was there. So there's three total? Well, there's three large ones that you have to change. There's two There's two yeah. smaller ones that are already non-paper. I didn't change the, the little baby ones. Yeah. Yeah, so I've got a point one UF. I think Another .1, point one, one UF. And a point .2 Ow! UF. Point two two. I just yep. poked okay. myself with a sharp object. Everything else is um, in pretty good shape. Frank, on mine, I just changed the three reefs, and it's been fine for hours of me screwing around. Sweet. And I have some of these here, uh, both of them. I had to order the .22s. I didn't have anything close. I've got 10 of them now. Well, I've got nine now because I, I could only find it as a 10-pack. Keep in mind, however, if you're watching Ooh. and you don't want to go through the frigamarola trying to figure out which capacitors you need for your Apple That's III right. first part, go to jcm-1.com and pick up a press like that. <laughs> which is actually very reasonable at less than $20. Yeah. Yeah. jcm-1.com. That's right. Let's see. Will they fit now? So I don't have I to use the way more expensive pins? I want everyone who... Nope. We're using the expensive pins. Who uh, who throws away their Apple III power supply to give it to me? <laughs> Look, Transformers more than meets the eye. 
people keep using the, uh, um, the reactor micro replacement. And I'm like, what'd you do with the original? Oh, I threw it away. I'm like, what? I'm the one who throws everything away. Oh. So. I'm going to turn off file sharing. It's not letting me format this drive. Oh. Hook, hook the two together and do the file sharing that was already set up. <laughs> well, I'm trying to format. I, I threw a four gig drive on there uh, off of the computer, a blank four gig drive. I'm trying to format it so that I can uh, oh, go? use it for to copy these files to. But it tried to tell me I can't format it because it's being shared, even though it's not even formatted. Transformers more than eats. Let's see what happens eats. now. That's weird. More there than we go. Eats the pie. Got it. JCM onecom I am normal. Great. I'm not weird. I promise that I'm normal. Right. Why Almost are you calling the guys in the white suits? Joystick Terminator. Okay. Jumper lock is done. That's going down. And now so that's that's a removable thingy. Yep. Yep. Just just pops right out. Boop. This comes out. Boop, 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 boop. It's back in. Now I can just copy all this stuff to the blank drive, right? Boop. Yeah, it's classic Mac OS. You just drag drag the whole every file over. Um, if there's a lot of stuff, I usually try to do like one folder at a time. That way, if it screws up, you don't lose your spot. Crap out in the middle. Yeah, I Jeremy's had that vintage before. Apple uh, or vintage Hillbilly Shack asks: Will 256k of RAM work in the Apple III without any trickery? Yes, if you have a five volt mm -hmm. Apple III, almost every single one of those came with 256. Yeah, mine did. Yeah, That's mine's a 256. It's just two rows of uh, 128. Nothing but a whole bunch of 4164s. Oh, and there's like oh. a big ass resistor on there, or a capacitor or something that. Yeah. Holds, for the 12 volt line. 16. Resist. Resistance is futile. Yeah. These are 16B8 yeah. bakers. Atmel 16B8B select. I think Joe said something. Joe, you said something like, oh, it's just here to make heat. <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 It, I believe it. It's to load down the 12 volt line for some reason. Yeah, that's what it's I on 12 volts. I don't know. That was my yeah. when I first heard that was that it was there to just put a load on 12 volts. And then after looking at my actual Apple three, I think that's what it's there for. I think, I think it's a silly design, but well. because the only thing in the Apple, the original Apple II that used 12 volts, I believe, was the RAM, the keyboard encoder, and the floppy motor. Hmm. And on early switching well, power supplies, you have to make sure you load down the rails or they don't switch right. Yeah. Yeah, floppy motor through a slot, and all the slots have 12 volts. Yeah. Um, thing is, if you didn't have a floppy card, it still had to go somewhere. Right. Extra mm. floppy. Delicious. I am uh, yeah. programming the PAL chip. That goes right there. Mm. One time I hooked 12 floppy drives up to my Apple II. And I wrote a program that would make all of them try to write at the same time from the original. It just basically broke the power supply. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! No, it just went like voltage drop done. Program, lock it, program. Programming fuse bits. And we are currently 50% done with the project. Yay. One board down. One to go. Yay. <laughs> the second one is yeah. slightly easier to build. Um, there's fewer parts on it, as you can see. But, you know, what what's the um, the market for these? If you're willing to say, like, how many do you think you're going to sell? Two hundred and eighty-seven. Um, good question. So, this if you don't want to say it, it's fine. No, that's fine. I'll talk about it. Um, let's. Uh, bye, Adam. Um, 
so oops i wanted to get enough interest when i spun this so that i could afford enough parts to make 50 of them or not 50 100 of them total okay um so without like putting way too much money out of pocket to build it so i put a word out hey if i can get 50 people and i went in i went in slack and facebook and twitter and a whole bunch of other places if i can get 50 separate people to show interest in this in about this amount and it only ended up being about ten dollars more than i estimated so not too bad um i will do a run and i got 47 and i'm like "Mm, close enough oh that's awesome so it's that's pretty cool so I got all the parts. I got enough parts to make 100 of them, plus a few extra bits and pieces of things that break easy, like the the um, these little crimp things break too easy. And I got some a few extra sockets, this, that, the other. Um, and I rounded some other things up, too, to get price breaks, whatever. But I got enough parts. Um, and then I put it out for put it out for sale. I'm like, hey, everybody, it's here. And I went to all of the places where I asked people if they were interested. And in the first three days, I sold 24 of the 47 that people said they were interested in. So, so what are you up to now? Imagine I'm currently in the hole on this project. Um, it was not cheap. Um, all told, all parts, shipping, taxes, all of that stuff. Oh, my gosh. Hi, Kate. Hey, it's Kate. How you doing? You feeling better? Yeah. I hope she's feeling better. Um, yep. I'm like $8,600 in parts to build this project. It's, yeah. it's a big project. The upside is that a lot of these parts are just generic stuff I can use for other things later that I then won't have to order parts for if these don't move fast. Like my sockets, I go through sockets like there's no yeah. tomorrow. Um, the RAM chips, the 4164 chips, I got a really, really good deal on those because I bought 1,600 of them. <laughs> um, so if these don't Getting ready for VCF Southwest. Woo, woo. So if I don't end up selling these, a lot of these, I can like just put the 4164s on my website and sell chips to people if they need chips. I would buy those. Mm-hmm. So. Um, well, when you put it up for the thing, like, hey, who wants to be interested? I was like, well, I want this project to happen. I didn't even have an Apple III at the time. Yeah. And I was like, well, I want this thing to be a thing. So I said, yeah. And then when you said, okay, here's pre-orders well i already said yeah so i went and bought it still didn't have an apple 3 and you're like okay i'm gonna start making them i'm like i guess i should buy an apple 3 now <laughs> yes <laughs> okay are you gonna bring um mackie to bcf midwest too she better mackie mackie, mackie is like mackie is my favorite <laughs> mackie is adorable I need the other board because I'm reference. Not that board. So, are you closer now to your goal than the beginning? What's that? Or uh, to, to get about fifty? Um, I don't know. Let me yeah. see, let me look it up. Details? What are details? I don't have to pay attention to anything. Hello, 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 hello. Okay, good. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, hear good. You. Hello. So hello, hello. Uh, let's log into. I'm sure thing. you're gonna get them. Uh, I'm on. Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm doing my Absolutely. my Kickstarter, and I'm also half of it, and it stopped. Nobody else is getting in there. So yeah, I think. It's... What you, you know, Javier? Why don't you take a minute to talk to people about your Kickstarter and get them interested? Yeah, what is your Kickstarter? Oh, oh, let's, yeah. Let's yeah. I Hello, I I'm Javier from about. Javier's videos. Oh, no, that's the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm doing a kick, Kickstarter for this, this cover, this front clear oh, yeah. case for yeah. the Apple II floppy. Uh, this work made by, by Mac Effects is a clear uh, case for the floppy drive. And they were using, you know, black front faces, covers, or whatever we want to call them. And I I went ahead and, and ordered a clear face from, uh, um, what's the name of this? PCB Way. PCB Way. And they did it for me. So 
I talked to them and they can do more for me. So I, I did a Kickstarter. So if people want it, they can, they can, you know, order it. And if they met the, the Kickstarter, we'll send them out to, to be made. Hey, I'm already in for two. Now, Thank Javier, you. is it, is it the whole case like that or just the front? I'm, I'm just doing the front. Yeah. The, the, the okay. Kickstarter is for the front only. Yeah, Mac Effects already okay. sells the, the 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 outer shell. Yeah, the outer is from okay. Mac Effects. You're right. Yeah, they just don't have the front. Exactly. Which you made. And okay, I really wanted sense. the front because the front's too gotcha. hard to make. So Javier had to do it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, it looks really good though. I remember you testing it out. Yeah. Uh, the, the now you have to make the bottom, make the bottom and the back out of transparent aluminum. Yeah. That transparent aluminum. <laughs> 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 We actually need to make this, the motherboard, smaller or on the side or something like that so we can see the, the head moving. Sorry, I, I got to put it up. Yeah. I mean, so that's, board. that board is already pretty tight. I'm not sure you could really make it. I'm thinking that maybe there's a way to kind of use something smaller, like a Pico, to, to reach, to, I don't know. You could take the, the board out of the machine and just have the, the uh, drive pin, yeah. the amphenol connector go from somewhere else into the case and leave the Yeah, like have board. a secondary little like black box that has all the analog bits in it. Yeah. yeah. Or you can make have two of them and do it like a duo disc. Have the have the two analog boards in a separate spot and then run them up into that case. And then I you have can have two drives. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, was, I bought two I bought two face plates. Because who has one floppy drive? You gotta have two floppy drives. Yeah, they're gonna be cool. So anyway, the the Kickstarter is is. Uh, let me check. Was it funded um, yet? Um, twenty eight backers right now. Now, do you have Only a link 20, to that on your come page, on, folks? Twenty eight. Javier, go get your link yeah, to that. Let me give you the. Hold on. Let okay. me get in there. Let me come to the computer. Let's you know what I should that. do is I should put that on one of my Apple III drives because I've got an Apple III and it's just two copy. Where am I? Oh. There's the Kickstarter. Yay! Okay, let's what? copy and paste this in here. I can't copy. Why can't I copy? Copy yeah. and paste. We need to copy. Does anyone copy, know copy, if, copy, and if and Mark paste. still sells the shell stuff? Yeah, it's Loopy, don't worry. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's not for everybody. You know, it's yeah. It's just you well, know, I think it's cool. Loopy, if you still trade me that Commodore 64 for a 2E, you might need one. Hmm. <laughs> That could work. Commodore 64. I only have 44 two E's in stock right now. But yeah, I think <laughs> I think it's gonna it's gonna get through because it's almost half of it and it's been like a week. Yeah. How so, much time is there left on it? 49 days, like 50 oh. days. So yeah. Oh, yeah, that's good. Good, good, yeah. good. You should uh, yeah, Wait a bit and then post it again on Twitter and like Apple II groups and stuff. Yeah, just remind people that it's there. Some people may have saw it, wanted to do it, didn't have the funding at the time or didn't think about it. Yeah, and then they and forgot then, about you it. Know, yeah. The, the, yeah, yeah. the thing is, if you sign up for it, I don't even think it even charges you until it actually ships. They don't. Yeah, Correct. until it, it, gets, it gets all the money. Uh, so now I'm curious, will the faceplate fit on the normal Apple II drive? Like, uh, if you don't have the clear case? Yeah. Yeah, it'll fit fine. You just would have a, a metal shell case still. Yep. Yeah. It's, yeah, because I don't a, see the case on Mac effects. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if Mark has any more of those, because that was been a while ago. So I don't know. I don't know. Let's ask him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He I feel really bad, because Mark sent me a couple um, when I was doing some uh, some consulting work for him. And I tripped over something or dropped something and broke both of them before I ever uh -oh. had a chance to install them. Mm. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I still have them. They're over there. I could probably fix them, but then they'll look ugly because they, you know. Yeah, they're crack. broken. I mean, it's a it's an acrylic piece that's just wrapped. And then it's not a complicated part. I mean, he yeah. originally wanted to do all the indents and all the vents and all that, make it look identical to the metal piece. Yeah, but, Way it, but, it kept, too but he said it kept coming out warped, so that it doesn't have the like the little indents on yeah. the top of the case. It's just flat. 
but a couple I got, they fit okay. It just seems silly to have a clear disk drive and then have that in the front not be clear. So, yeah. Jeremy's asking about the starter Kickstarter. It is not difficult. The issue for me was my bank. I I had to to put a special account because I don't want to put it in my personal account, just in case. Mm -hmm. So I have to put a new account. I create a new account, and it they they took forever and all that. So that's why it took a little while. But other than that, no, it's just filling it out, and you know they mm -hmm. they will review it. Two white people in the back of the bank saying. I don't know. He has a Mexican name. <laughs> we're uh, we're yeah. having power, power fluctuations here, so I don't know if I'm going to have power. Oh, wow. oh, no. Oh, no. There is a huge thunderstorm. Oh, that's right. Texas has a really crappy power grid now. That's right. Yes. Yeah, I heard about it. Yeah. Well, they have their own grid because they're like, oh, we're not going to join everybody else. We're going to make our own garbage. Yeah, yeah. You can, like, keep, oh, we can keep doing to? that and become the Republic of Texas again. Yeah, that's fine. Hmm. I'm that's... kidding. I love Texas. Yeah, it has its ups and downs. I I lived in Texas for six years, so and you survived. I did. <laughs> yeah, at an airport. And I was able to go Asterisk to it and leave. for certain levels of survival. Yeah, well, where I lived was not typical texas like dallas is not really texas really there you go javier i get oh, the two for what what oh you got one thank you yeah yeah why not what the hell let me see i don't have the clear case but uh if i can put it on the regular <laughs> drive, I'll just do that i don't care <laughs> uh, well thank if you. javier is like off, we can get mark to do another run of the um that's true your shelves Maybe, yeah, maybe Mark will will actually do it because I th I don't think it's that difficult for him. Mark should buy up whatever's left and then package <laughs> them with the drives and just sell them for more. Yeah, on their site. Why not? Yeah. Once they're in, absolutely. Sell the whole drive. Just put them on there. That's right. The whole thing. Yeah. Because when we were at GCF edition. Midwest last year, me and Eric like accosted the oh. guy coming in with a cart of Apple II stuff, and we got like twenty seven. Just two drives for five bucks a piece. Oh, guard says that there, uh, there's. Yeah, I just saw that. I oh, you when found I went one? to the yeah when I went to the Mac Effect site and I went to shop and then like all products I didn't see it listed. Oh, so hang on, I'm popping it in now. Let's see what we got here. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Yep, there you go. Thirty nine dollars. Oh, cool. There you yeah. go. It's not Sweet. cheap, but it's. I, I know what he went through to create that, so it's not super unreasonable. Uh -huh. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I like when I go to the shop. It's like paying for interest fee installments. Like, uh, oh my god, that's thirty nine bucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I'm buying the black case. Yeah. Oh, he still has the disc two uh, badge set too. Those, I got some of those from him. They look identical to the original Apple. He, he yeah, there we go. Really takes care of quality there. Yeah. Okay, now that now that um, I bought two of the shells. They better come through with the Kickstarter thing <laughs> because I won't have the matching case plates. <laughs> hey, Frank, the, the drive still look cool just with the, the outer shell. Yeah, it does. Well, his look yeah, really neat because I saw it. Yeah. Shell looks so what amazing. you do, yeah. you get one of those self-color changing RGB strips and hook it to the uh, activity oh, light. Yeah. So whenever the drive activity is going, the thing is just like, it's it's like doing disco dance. That would be cool. That would be I didn't. I didn't do that, but I made mine where it goes uh, green when it's reading and red when it's writing. Yeah. Yeah, That's well, you neat. can get those lights, you can get them from Plamen. You know that. This yeah. is actually yeah. the color you know how much, you know or how whatever much, is the name. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He sells Javier, that. Javier, do you know how much money I've sent to Bulgaria to buy stuff? From oh, yeah. Can <laughs> <laughs> you tell me? <laughs> He, he's oh. supporting the whole GDP of their country. I'm telling yeah. you, yeah. <laughs> All the exports. We had the uh, the opportunity to work with him on the Apple IIc keyboard for Mac Effects. And I'll oh, tell cool. you, the guy is a freaking genius. He is yeah. insanely smart. He's like, Joe, yeah. you didn't do this thing right. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Except polite and in Bulgarian. <laughs> yeah. He's so nice. He's so he's nice. really cool. So those yeah, really I emailed him one time because I really wanted an Apple IIc um, one meg clock card. 
one. Yep. Mm-hmm. I'm like, why are these never in stock? He's like, well, I don't like building this particular thing, but if you need one, I'll build it for you. Just, <laughs> oh, that's like, nice. Yes. He's like, okay, I turned it on. Go to the store now. There's one available. I'm like, click buy. Yeah. Hurry up. Get it before somebody else does. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so – uh, good question then speaking of clock chips uh, where can we source one for the Apple 3 or is there such a thing available it's built um, into the Apple 3 you just got to put the chip in right yeah but yeah yeah I have it you need the chip um, yeah. if you can figure out what the actual clock chip is because I don't have the chip nut name memorized um, mm-hmm. sorry I butted my head into my camera um, you can probably just go to UT source and get one so my okay. Apple three board, I'm assuming everybody else's, has a spot where it says battery, and then there's a there's a three pin yeah. connector there. Oh, yeah. Is that where we're supposed to put power for the saving the clock time? Yes. Do we it know says what the M- that is? M- like, I found an old head. Old head. I couldn't it's tell you the pin out. I I found an old uh, article. Your SOS deserves a clock for a 30-minute do-it-yourself project for the Apple III, and it uses the MM58167. Yeah. Okay. But what I want to know is what voltage does the uh, battery Hmm. part of it expect? And I'm assuming a three-pin connector means center in the middle and ground on the... Probably like 3.5, 3.3 volts, that kind of thing. Yeah. I know Ron loves it when we push the batteries and computers. Yeah. For the clock chip, it says three double A's or a nine volt battery. Well, there's this weird round holder on the board, and I'm thinking it. There was some specific thing. I don't really want to put a battery on the board anyway. I want to run a cable. I want to use like yeah. what Ron did for that little remote battery thing. Yeah. Yes, that you can now get at jcn-one.com. My, yeah, my so uh, lights hole. are flickering. Can you still see me? Yeah, we can see you. Yeah, so that hole, that hole right there on the left side, hold on, let me it's yeah. supposed to hold a battery, but I don't know of what that would be. It's weird. Yeah, I don't it's know either. Probably it's probably going to be documented. If I had to guess, it's probably documented in the level two service diagnostics. Um, yeah, I've got like all of the manuals for everything from 77 up to like 98, and I don't have anything for the Apple three for some reason. I thought I had the whole archive, but I guess I wouldn't really use that hole for a battery anyway. I just wire into that jumper, yeah, and then probably stick the battery like up in the front, like where the speaker is, just so it won't leak on anything. Yeah, I think one of the coolest hacks is the interlaced video mod. (laughs) Hmm. What what have I done? I don't understand what that is. Why don't you tell us about it a little bit, Joe? Yeah. How, how the interlaced video yeah. mod? What are you talking about? Why do I want interlaced video? Because it Why doubles do the video? Uh, vertical uh, resolution. Well, isn't it just the same right. hack as the uh, 2E enhanced graphics, basically, sort of? What do you mean? Like on the 2E enhanced, you've got, a, you've got double high res and super double high res mm-hmm. because it hacked the, the, the refresh. Um, double super super high res. I was not familiar that that was even a thing. It's an unused thing because everybody's like, ah, whatever. Nobody has that because you had to have one twenty eight k. You had to have enhanced, and you had to have, um, I think the RGB card. But uh, but the Apple three had the same hardware in it. Yeah. So the Apple three basically, if you place one ROM chip and put a switch in a particular location, it doubles the horizontal from whatever twice 192 lines is. One ninety two said that'd be three something, three eighty four. I'm working on you can get the interlaced ROM from my store. Three eighty four. But 84. But Joe, does anything use that? Like, is there any software? Mm-hmm. Okay. I put it up there because it is a trivially simple for me to ha- to provide it. I've um, seen people in the Apple Tree forum on on Facebook being like, "Oh, mine's cool because it has the interlaced ROM, blah blah blah." And I'm like, "What does that mean for you?" Like, I don't know. <laughs> but it requires a little you to actually to wire up a little switch. 
as well to turn on the interlace mode. Um, I don't know what it does, but yeah. I'm suspecting it. I, I believe it, it doesn't just like scan double. It actually puts a second set of graphics on that second set of lines. Well, is it like another graphics mode that appears? Or is it just that it improves existing stuff? I believe it's an extra graphics mode because there, there's a, in the Apple III uh, Plus, uh, Apple III Plus dealer diagnostics, there's yeah. a test for interlace mode. Okay. Yeah, that's the test I tried running the other night. I think you were on the stream. And, and you get like a single line. When I got to that, it was all cuckoo because it didn't know what it was. Oh, yeah. Um, and then I remember I had all the weird jumble double stuff, and it turned out I just had uh, the classic That's Apple it. III uh, reset your chips problem. Uh huh. Yep. You know, you ran this computer for 25 minutes straight. Down the chips are all going to pop out of their sockets. <laughs> <laughs> so, where did you say to buy this clock chip from? UT Source. UT Source. Okay. Yeah. Do you really need a clock on your Apple III? Why not? I know. On mine, I'm just going to, if ever after the date, I'm always going to tell it it's 1980. How else will I know while I'm playing World of Warcraft on that thing what time it is in my server realm? I got to keep track. Well, let me know, let me know, <laughs> where, you know. Find the, uh, where you find the Ethernet card. Oh, what? yeah, yeah. So Joe sent me a link the other day. Somebody figured out a uh, software stack for the FujiNet for the Apple III. Yeah, that would be uh, Bob. Lemon. That would be um, Bob Justice, Robert Justice. That's doing that. Yeah. Well, how are you going to do a FujiNet on Apple III? You've got to have smart port. So you have to do a smart port and then add that on. Yes. Wait, Joe, do you sell a thingy that makes the Apple III have a smart port? No. Who does that? We need such a thing. That? I don't know. Okay. If it's an easy enough thing to do, I'll sell it. <laughs> so I found they have the MM58167 on the UT source. Does it matter that it doesn't say AN after it? I it probably I does not means. matter. I don't know. I oh, here we go. National I, semiconductor. I added a question to sticking it under a ROM chip and it works. Oh, no slot clock. Yeah, no slot clock. I found a brand new one, like original Dallas one. Um, it was one of the ones where you put the little uh, coin cell. It works. Um, what's funny is the machine I was testing it on, somebody was like, hey, I want to buy that Platinum 2E, and I forgot it was in there. So I sold the Platinum 2E with the chip in it. <laughs> and then you called them back and be like, I want my chip back? No, I was just like, hey, John, uh, just so you realize, you got a free uh, clock in that machine. He's like, yeah. <laughs> so they have it listed for $7 a piece. Yep. A hey, company Macintosh called librarian F wants to buy an Apple III after hearing all this Apple III talk. Yes, buy an Apple III. Yes, you need one. Hey, buy an Apple III. There are several on. online right now. If you Operator, make an Apple III, an Apple III character, though, it has to be a special needs character. Yeah, I'm still waiting for another uh, character from Kate, but. Apple III would be a cool character, but it would be really, really heavy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Funny is all of us on this on this uh, stream have an Apple III now, and we all know yep. once you set it down. Well, Javier's got the ultimate there because you put the M100 on top, so it's like yep. double the weight. Like, how does that table not fall apart? I'm telling you, it's strong. <laughs> Really strong. Oh, because you guys, oh. you guys have the bracket that hold a monitor three on top of an Apple II. I put the the M100 like he's got there, the color RGB on that on that uh, little stand, and the stand like the bend. Joe is making my um, Titan three board. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Thought he was making my Apple, so, my Titan three board. <laughs> will my Apple II color monitor work on that? On what? Oh, the Apple oh, III. Oh yeah, with with. Well, with, it'll work with, with yes. awful, with awful, awful thing. results. Yes. You got to have oh, Joe's color good. color if fixer. You, yeah, yeah. Or if you get my yeah, because I've got my the color universal too. RGB adapter or the colorizer, you can plug that into any color NTSC 
Oh, no kidding. Device. Yeah, or you can I use like the monitor. Now, it's monitors. still going to be kind of crappy color video, just like on the Apple II. But yeah. it's sure. color video. It's going to be color. Be right. Or you could spend 800 bucks and buy that monitor that Javier's got there. Oh, yeah. Okay. I feel like I have one of those. Does the screen move? That thing is that? heavy it's, as hell. It's motorized. Yeah, it tilts, but it's motorized. It's not a green screen with the tilt manually thing. Oh, I have those. Yeah, I've got some of those. The, the, the M100 has a motorized tilt. It's an RGB. No Look, it's still and if you move it yeah. by hand, you will break it. So never, ever, ever. Look at all those colors. Yeah, I've got two of them that have broken tilts. I've got I, I own four of those, but I only have two that work. There you go. He's moving. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that That's monitor awesome. is is hard to find. Uh, it, it weighs nine million pounds. Holy cow! They're heavy as hell. Well, the uh, Apple Three monitor—I couldn't believe how light it was. I was fully oh, yeah. expecting it to be nice. super heavy. Like monitor, the, <laughs> the Apple Three monitor is based off a of Zenith T black and white TV. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's a nothing burger. Like it weighs nothing. Yeah, that's the thing is, is that real light. Whoever, whoever they had make it for them <laughs> used plastic that doesn't yellow, so they all look good. So. Yeah, no, it does. It really does look nice. It really, uh, mine yeah. contrasts greatly with the Apple III, which is super yellowed. Yeah, well, mine is too, except for that one spot where it looks like a post-it note lived there. So it's got like a big <laughs> farmer's hand. Yeah, probably says something it's got like a big the password hand. is uh, trust no one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do not plug this into the internet. It will be assimilated. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah, yeah, so I'll order some of those clock chips. Well, you order, then I got to figure out how to connect the battery. You order that and it's try on it here. Out, and then let me know how it works out so I can just follow yeah. your lead. Well, <laughs> well, I found this old article, you know, that somebody put together a 30-minute project, you know, for how to do it. I should buy a whole bunch of those clock chips and just put them on my site, people. Sell them. Yeah. Like, yeah, why not? A percent above cost just to have them as a source. Yeah. So I found this other site, this, uh, hang on, let me click back. F-U-T-U-R-L-E-C. Fertilac? Futurelac, yeah. Yeah, they have them for $1.90 a piece. Even better. That's good, so, yeah. yeah, that saves a considerable amount there. But there are some Apple Threes online still right now for sale. Um, so the odds are good to find one yeah, right my... now. My criteria when I bought the one I got recently was more being drivable than cost. Like I, yeah. get, I probably could have saved a hundred, two hundred bucks if I had bought something online. But I like the fact that I could drive an hour and a half, be it power on, and then load it in my car and not risk the shipping. Yeah, yeah. no, that's a What's good idea. Is I, well, I really didn't care about the monitor at all. Uh, it came with this yeah. monitor three. And I've never owned a yep. Monitor 3, and I never wanted to own a Monitor 3. But it came with it, so I'm like... Yeah. And it even has that gauze over the screen, and it's not wrecked. Yeah. But I don't care, because I want to use the M100. <laughs> I have a funny story oh, about yeah. the Monitor 3. So, uh, in middle school, we had a lab of apples, and that's how we learned programming and basic computer science. Mm -hmm. And uh, the entire lab had Monitor 2s or the Apple II monitor, whatever you want to call it. But the one by the door had a monitor three, and that was the one machine no one wanted to use because it looked good. Uh, the machine I used in high school in the Apple II lab was the only 2E when they, everything else was a 2 plus. And mine had it, and, and I was the like the lead of the class. So I got to use that machine, and instead of having any kind of green screen, it had a 20-inch Sony PVM because it was supposed to be the one that everybody else looked at because I had become the person like, oh, this is how you program, so just watch Adam. Like, blah, blah, blah. And I would sit there and I would turn it around and have the PVM facing me and I would just sit there playing Load Runner. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite thing. It's so fun. Do you have a color monitor? What does that cost? Like 20 grand? Yes. <laughs> Stand still. <laughs> I've got this stupid thing stuck in my head. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two. You're making two cards at the same time, five, Joe? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What? 
You're making two cards at the same time, or no? I I have this one as a build reference. Oh, because after you put the, the way it's designed, I kind of closely copied the original layout, mm -hmm. so the chip designations are under the sockets. Oh, okay. So you got. So see I can't which see one one, as I'm building it. I can't gotcha. see the original. Yeah. Nothing is socketed, so it didn't matter. You just shove the chip in and solder it. But I can't yeah. do that in yeah. this case. So you can't connect the Fuji Net to the RS-232 on the Apple III. You have to have a separate card with a smart port. Yes. That's how the, the Fuji Net had a smart port. Talks. Oh, you, you, you guys heard that uh, Fuji Net, or you say you say that, that Fuji Net just came out with a version for the Apple III? Yes. Yeah, there's but a how, software. But how? Yeah. Oh. Uh, here, uh, I will send you the link to the, uh, oh, what is this? The GitHub with the, uh, software. Okay. The thing is the Apple three doesn't For the Apple smart, three. Smart I'm assuming going. that Bob has a preliminary, um, right there. Some sort of special piece of hardware or something yeah. like a beta, a beta card or something. I thought, yeah. That's I, what I, I was thought somebody. Somebody was talking about a smart port enabler for the Apple III, and I can't remember where I saw that now. Because you would have to have smart port. And if, once you have smart port, it's easy mm -hmm. to do that. Um, for all I know, because see, the Apple III is faster. So it might be that if you run the Apple III with native SOS in two, two megahertz mode, it might be fast enough to bit bang smart port over the serial or something. I don't know. And the smart port runs mm -hmm. over the floppy interface. I mean, on Apple II, you can you can make it with with one chip. You can make a or just use an old like a grappler card with a ROM in it. You, all you need is a ROM to tell the this two card. Hi, I'm a smart port card. It, it, well, maybe that's what it is. Yeah, the Apple III's got that. It hmm. has a, the effective identical internal card as an as a disk two card. It is electrically identical. I'm going to switch interfaces because I need to go get food. I'll be right back. Uh, yeah, no worries. Yeah, I keep Googling Apple III smart port and I get nothing. I would no, guess I that if it's it's just software then, because the Apple III's got so it's much gotta be. RAM, right? You, it's probably sure. just a, a, an SOS resident driver that handles smart port uh, junk. Oh, well, nice. this, is, this is drivers, the stuff that he did. So yeah. maybe that is what it is. So then you must use the RS-232 with some type of adapter doodle. Well, like Adam said, sort. smart port, just, it just pings over the, the floppy. So maybe you just, you're plugging the FujiNet into the rear the floppy? floppy port and it does the thing. What the hell? What layout uh, is that? Javier, how do you connect your FujiNet to your Apple IIc? Floppy oh, port? I bought the, the, the one from Masteries, the guy in, in Spain. Yeah. And he, he did it. He's like a, like, like a little small connector it plugs into yeah the but what's it plug into oh into the um, into the drive uh connector <clears throat> floppy port yeah floppy port yeah, yeah. yeah. that's probably the so same then, thing yeah, it's probably just a software stack for is. sos yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's the same yeah. i did see a video where a guy made a bluetooth apple II keyboard external what he made an adapter using a uh, this guy made an external Apple II keyboard yeah. using a uh, Pico, like a Raspberry Pi type. Yeah, Pico, you can do that. Uh, option eight, where he did a Bluetooth. That. Yeah, adapter. I was like, that was cool. Yeah, yeah. is. Well, I was trying to think of extra ideas, so I have that extra Apple III board, but I don't have like the keyboard and the power supply. So if I rigged up like a just just like a test bench. Uh, I would have to have some type of keyboard. So I was thinking if the Apple II keyboard Bluetooth idea worked well, then maybe you could make a version for the Apple III with a Bluetooth keyboard. You know, just for the test bench. That would be cool. So that's what got me down that path of looking at articles and reading about how they did, did you, it. You saw that, that mini ATX thing that somebody's doing, isn't it, for the Apple II? Uh, Will has a mini ATX like power supply that him and his uh, friends were making um, well, no, there's, for there's a few a different that, Apple computers. That sells the board. You connect uh, a, a mini ATX power supply, you know, those 12 boards yeah. from China. 
and uh -huh. and it has a board that that it sends the signals to the cables corresponding oh, to no the kidding. Apple II GS and Apple II E. Oh, that'd be awesome. That's very cool, man. Yeah, I want to get one of those. Yeah, yeah. It's that's like twenty really cool. twenty four bucks. Oh, that's, the, cheap. The... that's not bad. Yeah. That's really so, cool. Twenty four dollars for basically a replacement Apple II. Well, no, it's twenty four dollars for the the board. Then oh, you, you the still board. need your cable to connect it, and you still yeah. need the the what's what is it called the mini ATX or micro ATX? Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. the little pluggy doodle. Yeah, pluggy do. That's yeah. still pretty cool. It is. I'm gonna get one just to play with it. Dan K, I bought an Apple Three Plus just to drop it on my desk to fix it. <laughs> Nice. Okay, so this computer is completely copied. I copied all the data off of this one. Yay! So I'm going to rename this to the Wait, computer. The this is the 5215CD. Okay, so this one's completely backed up, which is great. Because I'm going to send them an email tomorrow. Or just call them. They have a phone number. Yeah. Yeah, I okay. think my Apple tree is going to go in storage. So heavy. <laughs> too big and too bulky. Hey, I'm going to print invoices with it and send them to my customers with the <laughs> integrator. <image> <laughs> hey, I bought this thing for business use, man. Yep. yep. As long as I do it once, I can write it off on my taxes. Damn. <laughs> That's what I bought it for. Bought it for business use. Yep. It didn't work out quite the way I thought it would, so it's going to storage. <laughs> PFS, you but got yeah, the software and everything. Yeah, exactly. That's what I said. You know, I've got the the other stuff made right in the for the yep. desktop plan where it does the financial planning and out analysis. Yeah, you know, you got the I'm like man. I can't figure out why these numbers, these forecasts, are so good this year. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, did you have an outside agency make these? No, I did it on my Apple III, man. That's right. <laughs> you know. Hi, Hilarious. welcome back, Adam. Hi, thanks for letting me back in. I, I'm outside looking at the rain. It's fun. Uh oh. I hear it. At the rain. Yeah, here. See. Is this that force of rain that goes oh, sideways and upways? Oh wow, that? yeah, that's wet. Well, anyway, it's not, a, not a lot of bandwidth out here, so I'm going to turn the cam off. I'll just be on audio. All right. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, don't, don't get hit by lightning, man. Get in. <laughs> or do get hit by lightning. Live stream it. Yeah. 1.21 gigawatts. Yeah. 1.21 gigawatts. <laughs> Marty, have you seen the DeLorean? I saw that, Doc. I sold it. I sold it. <laughs> okay, I, I got saw the one back a video back. today. Um, it was a. I, I watched this channel. It's oh. about like oh, uh, <laughs> this this car came into the repair shop, and one of them came in. It was uh, we need new carpet for our car. Well, what happened to your carpet? Or our son stole it so he could sell it and use the money for drugs. Like oh, what? <laughs> like why don't you just oh, steal the whole car and sell man. it? <laughs> They won't notice that the carpet's gone. He was nice, and he left us the floor mats. Yeah. <laughs> Sold the for drugs. Nice. I need to repair like my floor a mats. or some shit? No, it was like a Honda Accord or something dumb. I like, have a... Uh, how does that I have, have run... any monetary value? I don't know. It's 20 bucks. It's 20 bucks, dude. Um, my car has rubber floor mats. Javier will love this. I have rubber floor mats in my car, the fa front, like factory option, and they have little rabbit logos because it's a Volkswagen Rabbit, but they're all yellow. So they're supposed to be white, but they're all yellow. So I'm going to retro write my floor mat rabbit what? logos. <laughs> do it. I want to know it. what happens. Well, I'm gonna if I don't video it, I'll at least take pictures of it because I want to see if it works. And if it doesn't, I'm just gonna paint the little rabbits white. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Drag soldering pins is super fun. 
Oh, uh, Frank, you, you had a question for me like yes, several days ago that I never answered. What I was did it? find. I don't remember. I did find the Apple Dot Matrix printer, the original DMP. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I also found a Platinum Image Writer Two for me to test that little uh, sheet feeder deal on. Yeah, the feeder. I didn't have awesome. time to plug either of them in or try anything or anything. I just. Yeah, no they worries. are in the house though. So when I get home, I uh, Saturday night, I, I'll I'll start messing with it. Sweet. I couldn't believe how well organized your storage was. It was very clean and orderly. That's actually room two. You should see room one. <laughs> I spend almost as much on storage rooms as I spend on rent. I believe That's it. How crazy storage I is not cheap. I pay um, for two ten by thirty storage units, and it's two fifty a month. I am. That's about what I pay. I am going to do some reorganization since one's only about a third full, and the other one's like crammed. I want to make an Apple mm -hmm. II room and a Mac room. Oh, that's awesome. And then get power and internet and then move in. I've seen people take those uh, light things where you unscrew it and put the light bulb and it gives you the outlet yep. in storage units. <laughs> um, don't tell U-Haul, but there is 110 volt power available in one of my rooms. Yeah. Huh. Nice. There's, a, there's a behind the scenes um, video, a behind the scenes documentary of Megadeth. This is just a weird thing that I remember. Um, <laughs> where of them recording an album and they turned a they, they turned a storage unit like that, a larger one, but they turned a storage unit into a studio. Just like there's electricity in, in here, that's good enough. We're making it a studio. And they transformed it into a professional recording studio because it was cheaper than paying recording studio fees or something. That's crazy. Yeah. Huh. Got no sound. It's like, yeah, we're my, not really allowed to do this, rooms, but, you know. Huh. My storage rooms have linoleum floors because the, the storage unit actually used to be a Kmart. Oh, no kidding. That's hilarious. And when you walk around, you could still see stuff on the floor like, you know, restrooms this way and, uh, you know, women's Blue clothing that way. Yeah. Blue light special. Hmm. Ah! Oops. That one. That one. All done. So now we got a stuffed chips. Yay! Chip stuff. How many 161s? One. Guacamole. One. Guacamole, guacamole, guaca, 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 mole, mole, mole. Mole, mole, mole. Okay, copy in the second computer. There's another one sixty-one. Wow, the transfer rate on this is way faster on this one. That's loose custom. Yeah, it's the external V two. 259s, wow. exactly one. The most shocking transfer rate I've seen recently was when I was playing with the 9600 and I was trying to clone mm -hmm. a hard drive. One, two, and first I put a blue SCSI version two in there on the internal SCSI bus and it was like, yeah, it was saying it was going to take like 35 minutes or whatever. Oh, that's I was like, okay, whatever. I walked off. It finally worked. But then I was like, well, I want to clone it to a uh, SATA drive. And I put one of Eric Helgeson's modified uh, SATA cards in there. They copied the whole 500 meg drive in like two minutes. Holy crap. Oh, wow. That's it was insane. So I put an SSD in my 9600, and it boots up in like 27 seconds. It's insane. It's Ooh. like, wow. you put good. like 2010 technology in a 96 computer. And it's all like, hello, I'm ready for you. And I'm like, now i got to buy a G3 for this thing. Cause it's, well, it's that's, like the, uh, that's like the people that would put the uh, uh, 5.0 Mustang engines in the Mazda Miatas. <laughs> I've never heard of that. Big, but the moment you yeah. said it, I'm like, oh, my God, yeah. I must see one of these. Oh, they, they move. They move. Yeah, because the Miata of, like, weighs weight. as much the car as a baby was, like, nothing. Yes, the car was like nothing. Yep. 
You can I'm so in the old in my fifteen year old car because I've got I've got a two point five inline five cylinder in a car that weighs about as much as uh, probably Javier's F three. And uh, you put your foot down and it's just like go. Oh, works. Oh yeah, acceleration on older cars were awesome. You know, with the actual engines, you know, decent sized engines and stuff in them. I had an eighty eight Mustang that was a T tops. The two removable uh, glass windows at the top. Yeah. And uh, it had a 5.0 in that. And uh, man, you just touch the gas, that thing would go. Now the ring's going sideways. You got that forest jump ring now. Javier, are you taking off? Yep. How? Have a good one. Bye, Javier. Bye. Thank God. Oh, wait. Yeah. This second computer transfer, man, this is way faster on the 575. You think 8 bits are dead and gone. Oh. I got a SCSI 2 new bus card. I'm going to plug that into the Quad 800 and see how it does. It works pretty good in a, like a Mac 2. But I'm thinking a Quad yeah. with a faster bus might make that actually. Oh, that would be cool. Like in your 9600 or what? The power no, I'm put oh, that, in the one of the Quadra. I'm going to put that in the Quadra 800. In the 9600, I got the Theta card, and that thing is that. It's PCI. But for an 800, I'm thinking that I've got to add a SCSI card. It's 20 megabit instead of the 5 that's built in. Yeah. 374. Go in the hole. There we go. Yeah, I'm shocked that these actually booted right up and had a ton of stuff on them. Cool. Now we get to program a whole bunch of PAL chips. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, nope, this is a 374. So seven. Yes. Pal chips for the win. For the win. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, I got another 161 that goes right here. Sorry. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven ATF PAL emulator chip thing to doodles. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Is this thing on? <laughs> yes, we're here. Hello. <laughs> I'm making Power stupid style. jokes and it's just silence. I'm like, I really am that bad <laughs> comedian, apparently. Nope, we're here. Oh. I was just looking at these clock chips. So now we program chip a doodles, chip a doodles. With the if I buy 25, they're cheaper. Hmm. Do I really need 25? No. <laughs> I only really need one. I need A5. This goes into A5. <laughs> now stuck in my head. Great. Suggestion point. Uh... Now we got B3. Load B3 program. Programming. This goes into B3. The next one will be C1. Load C1 
one program go. Geek with social skills asked if your YouTube was in the public Discord or not. And I said I think it was just a Patreon thing, right? Yes, but like if he wants to jump in, uh, that's fine. Shoot it if you want to shoot him the, the link. You have yeah. The link. Okay. Well, I figured I would ask. Me too. Just to be sure. I usually, it's usually for my patrons to start just because it's a. Mm -hmm. It's an extra perk of being a patron. It is. It's cool. Hang out with me on stream. Absolutely. Now I got to figure out where I put it. Oh, right here. I'd, I'd here. do it, but my hands are full. Which one do you want me to send? Um, hold on. That was the entire. What do you mean? The view the link? The, the same link. Or just, I sent it to you. I sent it twice in case people forgot. No, no, no. I've got two links. I've got one to actually join the stream as a guest or well, to view the stream. Yeah, I would assume that's what he's asking for, is it not? <laughs> I don't know. It's like, where's the link to the stream, right? I yeah. posted all on my social media if that's what he's asking. I don't know. There you it know. is. Ding, ding. D1. Go. Back. That's chip D1. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now we need to do chip D3. Should be no surprise that, uh, oh my gosh, who is this? Hey, you, you. know, You know, Joe, you said you didn't want my dollar, so I don't have your Patreon link. What? <laughs> I was going to join yeah, and you're yeah. like, we don't need to pass that dollar back and forth. So Oh, <laughs> that thing, yeah. Yeah. I'm really I kind of weird on that, honestly, with 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 Patreon. Like I like to support if I support somebody on Patreon myself, I like to just support them and be yep. done with it. And yep. so like if we support each other back, both of us don't get the whole dollar because of Patreon fees. And then Patreon is just keeping three quarters of a dollar. And it's like, uh, we're just giving. Why don't we just not have our own version of Patreon? Yeah. Here's my bank account number deposit. I mean, you can do coffee. Coffee doesn't have fees. Oh, I just but figured then... I would join since Adam, Adam was being, uh, you know, no camera. You know, I, I would balance out the uh, stream with. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> Here we go. Here, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess up the balance. Oh, oh no! no. <laughs> well, it, it used to look like I was wearing a monocle, but not anymore. <laughs> cool. So those chips are done. Those two chips are in there. So chips. I need to do these things, these pin a doodles. Pin, 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 pin a doodles. Pin, pin. I am not weird. Shut up. So how me. how do you program them? What's that? So how do you program them? All program, your pal chips. Oh, the pal chips? Uh just with mm -hmm. the standard um uh EPROM mini, programmer? Mini pro ROM programmer, yeah. You're you're not using the EPROM programmer for the Apple II? What? That is no. the thing. I just saw a card. Uh, one of the guys was selling it. I, I don't know if it was the whodunit guy or not, but somebody had one listed. An EEPROM programmer for the Apple II. Cool. Just pop it in the slot. Yeah, I thought that was so neat. I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure that <laughs> that would be supported, that, or that would support these PAL chips, though. They're yeah. I was going to say they're probably limited on what you can use it for. I'm sure. Uh, but I just thought it was so cool. I didn't know that was the thing. Dude. Bye, Adam. Adam dropped. You might have lost the leaving me. What's outside? <laughs> wow. Nah, no, it's fine. Joe he programs outside, them by so. singing them, singing to them. Yes, he holds true. them and he sings. One note at a time. <laughs> one, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero. <laughs> padding, 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 padding. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. jcm-1.com 
the uh, it's funny the uh, the Apple II E board is the one that has mm-hmm. the most PAL chips on it because it's got the most custom craziness required for all the Apple II E um, extra doodles. Mm-hmm. It's like half PALs. All your PALs are there. Okay, so that one's on there. Now we get to do this one. Shop a doodle. Which is what this is for. Shop a doodle. I do buy eggs for Bart. So, Joe, I think I have the same pin straightener as you. Can you flip it over and it's got different size? Uh... Yep. I can't tell because it's all black. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so yeah, yeah that that's, it looks like the same one I have where you can do the small or the, the wide. Yeah, yep. Very handy. And so I've had that. I've had it for several years. I got my, uh, I have two of them. Funny story. So I didn't realize that there was a space on the back of it for doing the larger chips. I just, I just mm-hmm. didn't occur to me that that's what that was for. So I um, wanted one for larger chips. And then I did another search for pin straighteners and found another ad or whatever and got a second one. Um, and it ended up being the same thing. And then I'm like, I'm an idiot. Because yeah, the second ad they had, like, the picture was of the other side for that. Yeah, listing. yeah, exactly. Exactly. Nice. Like, well, now I have two. Now you can do double the work. And uh, I, I basically just use the... Uh, the cable as a soldering jig for these. You just kind of keeps the pins exactly where in the way that the the cable wants to use the pins, if that makes sense. And let's go. I determined that I officially reached old man status when I started using um, my uh, microscope to do through pin through mm-hmm. hole soldering. <laughs> I used to be able to just do it, but I'm like it's too small for my eyeballs. Boop. Boop. All the boop a doodles. All the news that's fit to print. So, Adam is back. So, hi Adam, welcome hi. back. Did you get wet? Yeah. I got. I ordered a uh, a resin printer, an SLM printer. Resin printer. Yes. So I can do super fine detail stuff. Like, like a three D. 3D printer? Yes. Hmm. So I can do really fine detail things like key stems for my Apple III keyboard. That's yes, I bought cool. a whole printer just so I could design and print those. Why not? Another product. Oh, and Adam, just for you, when I posted on Twitter the picture of the Z80 card, I made sure not to put my channel sticker in the picture for you. <laughs> I was gonna, eyeball. That was gonna no, I was gonna tag you and I'm like, nah, maybe he'll figure it out. Uh, that I was being nice. I didn't see that. But that's funny. Yeah, I did a trade with a guy to uh get one of those cards and oh he gosh. ended up having the manual and the, the software for it too. Added bonus. That's awesome. Uh, cool. Pretty sweet. And Frank, uh, Loopy Malibu oh, says yeah. he sent you images on Discord. Oh, a little I will filler pin right now. Thank you, thank you. Oh, here so, we go. Here's another interesting thing. If oh, you're yeah, I see. If you need little filler pins or uh, standby, I'll come back to that button. Come back to that thought once I find the thing that I'm talking about. Oh, it's all about your doohickey. Doohickey. <laughs> well, 
I gotta find it first. So anyway, Adam, are you are you traveling, Adam? Yeah, I'm in Austin, Texas, right now. It looks like you're in a very fancy room. Uh, semi fancy. Fancy. <laughs> so, you see the little filler that's in that pin pinhole? Yeah, th that's yeah. called a key, correct? Yes, a key. Do you know that buying those pre-made is insanely expensive? There's no. something like 20 cents a piece. It's that's stupid. more than the connector. Yeah, so I 3D print them instead. <laughs> I just have to find them. I have them here somewhere. I don't know where they are. I 3D printed a whole bunch of them and just they disappeared somewhere in the mess. They're right there. They're on your Nabu box, right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're inside the Nabu box under the power power button, right? So I went downstairs to see if I could order some food since uh, there's no Domino's. And because the power keeps fluctuating, they're like, no, we're not going to make any more food because we can't guarantee that we can finish it. So I went ahead and did a Uber Eats order. Here we go. What did you order? Some Italian food. Fettuccine Alfredo and chicken and a Caesar salad. A whole bunch of little little thingy doodles. That sounds yummy. Yeah. And it just goes in here, just like that. Thing in my jig. It's like the little people from the life game. Yeah. I yeah. Totally exactly. <laughs> That's funny. You know, Joe, you could put those on eBay and probably say that that's what they are. They're, say that they're reproduction original. life little people and <laughs> yeah. get like five bucks a piece. It broke off. Oh, no. I'll have to use the second one. Oh. Whatever will I do? Well, that thing we were talking about the other night where people are selling four feet for the Apple IIc for like $10. Oh, yeah. You can, you can buy 56 of them for like six bucks or whatever it is. I don't know where it went. Yeah. I'll just have another one in there. That's fine. They cost me like two tenths of a cent a piece. There we go. You put it in the wrong hole. Yeah, no. It's it's in the right spot. See? Are you sure? No. Yeah. I'll let you know when I turn it on and if the Apple 3 catches fire or not. As any sailor I mean, will tell you, it, there I mean, is no wrong hole. Yeah, <laughs> Trina. Um, <laughs> of course, turning on the Apple Three, there's a fifty percent chance it's going to catch fire. Generally, I play the so. Um, so. So make sure your camera is uh, on for the Apple Three, yes. so we can catch it in case it happens. Yes. Exactly. Still stuck, still stuck in my head, still stuck, still stuck in my head. <laughs> I win. <laughs> I can't, I can't leave my Apple uh, I'm, while I'm out of the room because I'm still afraid something's going to blow up. Yeah. All right, now we're going to install stuff. Let me see if I can get the side cam so you can watch me do it. Side cam. Install the things, all the things. Do, do. Oh, Frank, did, did your Apple III come with a parallel card? No, it has no cards at all. Oh, well, then I don't know how you're going to hook that printer up. Um, Serial printer. Yeah, you have to do a serial printer unless you can find an Apple III parallel card. It's Bluetooth. There's one for sale on <laughs> eBay right now. Don't bid on it. I want it. Is it from our friend? No. In California? Different no. guy. Or gal. Different person. Person. Uh, we are going the one to you're bidding on or the one you're not bidding on? <laughs> because our friend has one listed for $10. That is, the, yeah, yeah that, that's, one that's the one. Yeah, that's the one. I got that confused. With okay. Someone. So, yeah, because I was going to say the other one's listed for 40 bucks. So everybody watching, here is how you install this. First, I like how you, how you have EEPROM storage or whatever that is under your uh, power thing. What are you talking <laughs> about, this? Yeah. <laughs> That's all of the chips in this that have been replaced by my chips, my reproduction chips. These are just all the originals. 
Oh, okay. And these are zip sockets for me to eventually convert this into a test box with full of zip sockets. So, neat. Right. Step one: remove the video uh, ROM. Do you have? Is your video ROM broken? Do you need a replacement? Go to jcm-one.com and get a replacement. <laughs> Uh, quick question. Which card are you installing that you have to remove these for? The Titan card or the soft card? The Titan, the Titan card. Okay. Yep. Just checking. The 3 plus 2E goes in first. It goes in slot 2. You fold this over like that and kind of lay it there. Mm -hmm. And then this, the, the uh, ribbon cable goes into the video ROM socket. It's a little fiddly, but it will work. Okay. Now you have your second ribbon cable right here, this little guy. The three plus two with an ant crawling on it because I have ants in the house at the moment. The three mm. plus two goes right here in slot three. And then the little header goes over the top and plugs into the socket on the top. So these two are socketed together, and the 3 plus 2 E is in the video socket. Got it? Yeah. Then you have to have the right software, of course. So I'm going to go to here, because then you get to watch me boot it up. Boot it. Boot it good. Do you include the software with the card? What's that? Do you include the correct software with the card? Um, I will be, yes. I will be including Sweet. the correct software plus some extra disks. Sweet. Love it. It should be booting the Apple III Confidence uh, image. This will tell me at least the machine is booting correctly. Or not. Are you confident? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't this the disc that actually talks to you? The one you showed me the other day? Yes. <laughs> oh, that was hilarious. Like so you Apple took the video talk. chip out and this one uses its own? Yes. Sweet. Well, it does change the screen color, so it's got to be doing something. Well, it's just, that's just the video part of the circuit is, is, is running. Ah. It's not booting. Uh-oh. Did you plug it it's in? It's falling. It'll boot up. Oh. Yes, Sean, I plugged it in. Silly. Did you try turning it off and then back on again? <laughs> <laughs> Just double Very checking. common mistake. <laughs> Making sure I'm not missing yeah. any parts or bits or resistors or things are put in the correct direction. They're all soldered. We told uh, you the little life person you put in the wrong hole. We tried to <laughs> warn you. Great. You put them in the right, wrong career path. It's yeah. raining crazy here now. You can be a winner. Uh, game of Adam, it. so it just needs a parallel interface card then, correct? Yeah, parallel card. For that dot matrix? Sweet. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No problem. What I can do is um, I still have to make a cable for mine to go to the Apple parallel card. Oh, it's not yeah. a big deal for me to make two of them. All I gotta do is get some yeah, no, electronics awesome. and some IDCs and um, um, yeah. so I just I only have the one parallel card though. Yeah. This uh power That's supply thing that was built. I think I have a chip in the wrong location. Stand by eighty two. Yeah. So that also coincides no, with the right location. location. I just put the wrong side. Uh, May of eighty three. I think my Computer is late 82. It's a pretty late one, which is oh, good yeah. for me. I don't want an early one because the early ones are all dumb. They're all broken. Yeah, like so I this serial number. Right so you saw the serial number on that random board was a low 17,000 one. This one's yeah. 115,838. <laughs> I think they might have skipped a number. Like they probably added a one when they revised it. Yeah, um, they had to claw back doing. fourteen thousand machines and redo them. <laughs> okay, that's, that's kind of what there's I was a, thinking. There's a huge gap in the Apple II line too. Like it's like starts with one, and it goes up to something like sixty-five thousand, 
And then it mm-hmm. suddenly just jumps to like a hundred and something thousand. Jeez. Well, I, I didn't figure there was like 120,000 of these things anyway. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, numbers going to be like only 70,000 of those ever made. Yeah. Yeah. yeah something like and that. And it says one. Yeah. Cause this one says, uh, 115,832. So yeah, I'm guessing it's probably like 15,832. <laughs> yeah, Apple's one of the only companies with the Apple II where they started with number one. Most companies. Yeah, that is weird. They'll they'll start with like 10,001. You know, something like that. Yeah. Um, I still have serial number 1200 or something. Apple II. Oh wow! Holy crap! Yeah, that's pretty decent. I need to fix it. Still. Cool. Oh, I've identified which card's the problem. Oh. So first things first, I'm going to swap over to another card I know works just to make sure it's not my Apple II being or my Apple III being dumb. Because Apple III. I love how Uber tries to make you feel guilty that people are driving in the rain to bring your food. It says Joel is oh, well, dodging raindrops. He's dodging oh, raindrops to bring your food. Also it says you should shift twenty one percent instead of twenty percent because oh, you're driving in the no. rain. Okay. I cool. was just gonna ask that if it tells you you should tip more. <laughs> yeah, it does. There's a problem with the board that I just built. Did That's, you spill yeah. your coat? All there is to it. So Yes, I did. I, I opened it. it. Oh. Don't leave it sitting on top of your Apple two, Apple three. Yeah, no, no. It's over on the other side of the room. Okay. There we go. That's Still really check, weird. Make sure I have all the chips, all the right chips in all the right spots. Now, I don't want to message your uh, Uber driver and tell them that they're going to have to deduct for uh, you going outside in the rain to get your food? That's right. No, I told them to come up. I told them to get in the elevator and bring my crap up here. <laughs> I'd like it. Well, he's already going to be wet from going in the restaurant to pick up the food, so it should be they no problem. They don't always do that. Sometimes they'll just go to the front desk and be like, oh, this is for room blah, and then make them call me, but uh, then, yes. then the tip goes, no. Yes. Yeah. Like, well, no, I mean, no. You, know, you know you're coming to a hotel. Just 138? Yes. 05? Yes. 153? Yes. 20. Yes. 1K bus. Yes. Yeah, all those. Is, is, is one of your pals out of line? Yeah, my friends are always out of line. Ha ha ha! Pals! Yeah. Joke! Mm. Bad! Um, 86. Yes. That's why you always write your essays. Yes. 139. MP. Yes. Well, why is it there? Yes. <laughs> How? How it's like on the is. on the Apple II language card. There's a spot for a 16 pin dip that just says spare. I'm like, what is this here for? Exactly. Why bother? <laughs> yes. One fifty three. Yes. Another one fifty three. Yes. One fifty three. Yes. One fifty three. Yes. Cool. And that's all Bingo. for him. And F one fifty three. Yep. So all the right, the chips are in the right spots. Okay. Hmm. Now we make sure I didn't miss any solder joints. Do you remember that one time that you built a blue scuzzy and you forgot to solder in like? A whole row of stuff. Yes. What's oh that's empty. That's supposed to be. <laughs> You're like, oh this needs resistors to function. <laughs> that was funny. Wasn't the the one I sent to Dave? I forgot to it was on a live stream. I was building it on Dave's live stream. Yeah. And it worked well enough. For me to boot it up and test it and send it to him, but something what? didn't. Something was just slightly off that it didn't. Like the lights didn't work because yeah. I forgot. Like hmm. just the pins yeah. that are involved in the lights. The one I remember is one that you built, and you're like, "Why doesn't this work?" And then you actually figured out what was missing, and then made it work by the end of that thing. It was a couple of years ago. 
this looks like it's built correct, so I'm not sure what the deal is. I don't know. Now you had all your pals pre-programmed? No, but I programmed it while I was on while I was doing it. Oh, that was fast. This is D6. When you programmed them, did you have it uh, check them as well, or just write write them and not? Yeah, I had to check them. Yep. Hmm. Here we will go. You will watch me do it live. So I'm going to put this pal chip back in here. This is pal D6. Do it live. D6, this one right here. Open. I'm going to hit verify. Verify. Passed. So it's correct. Sweet. I'm going to reprogram it anyway, just in case. Yep. Okay. All right. That's not it. Probably. It verifies. Okay. Sure, they're all the pin, things are in their sockets. Yes. Oh, that's right. You forgot to pick up the Apple Three and drop it. That. Oh, that's stop. Right. stop! Stop! What a what a new joke! All, I've never heard that joke before. All my circuits. <laughs> Calculon. I mean, it's almost as good as have you turned it off and back on again? You know, I mean, yeah. yeah. It crowd joke. Uh, now, what's funny is when I was working on my Apple III the other day and I was having intermittent issues, Joe said, reseat the chips. I'm like, yeah, okay. And then it worked. So. <laughs> Switch over to this board. I mean, I don't understand how you can sell like a, what it was like $8,000 or something for this computer and you use two cent sockets. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there were worse sockets in the, than they were on the Apple II. And that was a $1,200 computer. Hmm. I was picking up your order. The guy's driving a Honda Civic. It's working now. I must have had a loose chip. Oh. Well, we can't see it. Well, I'm switching to it. Just hang <laughs> on. Yay. Now, you're going to see a little bit of, like, weird flicker in the video because I'm. that's just that's my capture system. Also, if I go to VGA mode, that will go away. My uh, Apple III capture is just as weird. So we can do machine test. John, do you own an Apple III? Do I own an Apple III? I'm okay. Machine status, normal. I do not. Uh, you gotta get one. All, all the cool kids are getting one. So, uh, the plot thickens on this whole Gorilla Foundation thing. You know how we were talking about Coco the Gorilla and the Gorilla passed away? Yeah. Uh, I just, I'm on their website now looking for contact information to reach out. And it shows Coco passed away on June 18th, 2018. That's my birthday. <laughs> June 18th. That's weird. That is that's weird. That's what I just said. I just read it and I'm like, well, that's a very interesting twist so to this the whole disc. thing. That's very Was anyone still running that if the, if the animal is Yeah, passed. no, it's still live. Okay. Uh, no, 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 they have other gorillas, but they also do gorilla rescue and stuff worldwide, not just okay. here in the U.S. Hey, Joe, that doesn't yeah. look right. Yeah, I know. Hmm. Picking up your order. And tell them that it better not be wet from the rain. <laughs> I don't want any waterlogged pasta. Yeah, that's right. I said al dente. 
Uh, let's see here. They're right next to I-35. That's not far from here. Interesting. Hmm. <laughs> well, you all have a good evening. I am going to go figure out food for myself. Oh, this pasta talk. All right, I, dude. I'll see you later. Yeah, I, I've got some uh, some ravioli I might uh, throw in a pot of water and, and cook up. <laughs> we'll see. All right, have a good night, everybody. See ya. Have a good one. Yep, Bye. Thanks, Bye. thanks, Joe, for letting me pop yep. in. No problem. Anytime, man. See ya. It's broken. It's a lead, lead butthead. That's a great name. It says, oh, it was the... It was the um, Insertion force, but the thing is, you can push all the chips down in the Apple III, and then when it when the thing heats up, the thing is it's surrounded by this aluminum block. It yeah, just, it's just it yeah. makes the heat makes the chips wiggle out, so you can push them all in, and then they just come back out again. Because I did that when I first got the board, I pushed all the chips in, and after running it for a couple hours, messing around with stuff, it was like, oh, now it's messing up, Yay! and I went and pushed all the chips back in. So this problem is my Apple III. <laughs> oh, no. You mean an Apple III has problems? No, not an Apple III. No I've way. Heard of such a thing. It's like now when I go to the Apple II and II Plus group, they're like, oh, I'm having this issue. I'm like, Let's just try the Apple III for five minutes and you'll be thankful for what you have. <laughs> I do buy eggs for Bart. <laughs> now Jeremy's talking about uh, pasta also. I could really use some chocolate right now. What kind of chocolate you like? Dark chocolate. Uh, that's what Pam likes, too. Yeah. I like good... Good... Ah! European it is the chocolate. Three plus two e board that has a glitch. Okay. Ooh, I see some stuff. So the soft like card? A... No. That one. The soft card is not even installed in this machine. Yeah. So what is that board? This is the three plus two e board. It has a problem. Wow. Oh. That's the one you just built. Yes. I switched over to my test article, and as we can see. It works fine. Yeah. That's fine. I'll figure it out. Probably not live on stream, but I'll figure it out. Because it's it's getting a little bit late for a work night for me. But I probably just have something not plucked, pushed into a socket all the way, or I did one of the pals wrong or something. Yeah. That's fine. We'll get to it. So um, we're going to show you it working on a machine where it actually works. Hi, everybody. I'm Tiny and in the corner. Um. So first things first, I need to, um, I'll show you a little bit what I'm doing here. So I've got my uh, W drive connected with my own homemade adapter. And so I'm going to change the disk image to an Apple II disk image that I know will work. This one. Okay. And so then we select number three, start Apple II emulation. Hmm. Neat out. Isn't that fancy? Now there's no color over the RGB port um, in Apple II mode. That's a limitation of the video hardware that cannot be fixed. However, if you have one of my colorizer boards or my universal RGB and you use the NTSC version, you get color. Nifty, huh? So let's add on a play Dung Beetles. So wait, you can't do color? RG, out of the RGB to... Nope, not in Apple II mode. Oh, that's weird. Yep. Yay! Neato. <laughs> yeah, <it's> silly. Is the artifacting on the screen due to the converter? The uh, uh, video converter? What artifacting? On the very left side? 
Yeah. That is a side effect of the way the Apple III generates video. That cannot be gotten rid of without severe modification to the Hmm. entire Apple III. Yeah, that line's there. So that that shows up on your normal monitor, too, not just for the stream. Yes. Yep. Yep. If I go over to... Uh, I just didn't know if it was like the HDMI conversion thing to stream it or whatever. Oh, yeah. I see it, too. Yep. Yeah, it's just a known glitch. Yep. I know about that for a while. I didn't realize the way they decide to to latch the data somehow. Yep. Dung beetles. I never did realize that the RGB wouldn't do color from here, but... Not in Apple II mode, it won't. That's fine. Hmm. It's it's weird. I don't know why. That's just how it is. Let's... It's playing itself. Let's do... Let's boot a different disk. I want to go to... And you also, you can't, re- you cannot reset from this mode. You have to turn the machine off and back on. Huh. <laughs> you reset from this mode, it just locks up. So the button on the keyboard reset. Correct. Gotcha. You have to change back to the uh, the Titan emulation disk and boot well, it up. I, I had issues using control reset from just the old Apple II, you know, boot disk mode. Yeah, it's it, the same it, problem. It's screwy. I just was turning the machine off to reset it. Yeah. So, which I want to boot here. I want to boot that. Beep. Joe, do your recap kits come with the Reefus too, or no? Yes. They come yeah, with Apple the Reefus. Reefus? Yes. Yep. Gene, okay. I, I, I ordered one. What does it think the computer is? Apple <laughs> Wait, leave it there for a sec. So it sees one of the built-in serial ports as a serial? Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's cool. Super. So you should serial. be able to use an image writer from in there. Yep. Sure can. Yeah. All right, cool. Yep. There's some other settings, too. Like, if you want to use double high-res graphics, you have mm-hmm. to change a setting on the emulation disk and reboot it to use a double high-res program. Like Dazzle Draw or something like that? Exactly, exactly. Okay. If you don't do that, this, the graphics are garbled on the screen. Why yeah. it needs that, I don't know. It has to set some sort of special register on one of the vias that you can't set live. Probably because that via is not accessible to the Apple II software. It doesn't know about that. So the Apple II software doesn't know how to like properly switch it, switch the graphics mode or map the the double high res bits bit toggly flips to the Apple three yeah. bit toggly flips. It doesn't know how to do that. And yeah. there's no way to expose that hardware through the slots would be my guess. So you have to, from the emulation mode, have it flip the bits, then flip it to Apple two mode so that they're oh. pre flipped. If that makes sense. That's yeah. my guess. Okay. Um, because if we remember the Apple three came out before <laughs> double high res was a thing. Right. Right. So we've got to, do the thing. Dave's Dave. here! Hi, Dave! We were just talking about the blue SCSI uh, I made for you wrong. <laughs> I think a lot of stuff from the Apple III, though, was, uh, made its way into the 2E, because there's a lot of stuff there yeah. that's sort so of... So there's your, your, color, your color graphics. Yeah, that looks great. Excuse me. Um, <laughs> yeah, in RGB mode, but if we go to NTSC mode... Look at ah. the pretty colors. Look at how they're frigging correct. Yeah. Why? Why are they correct? Because I have my phase three, uh, uh, my phase three adapter doodle in there. I'll yeah. see if I can do this live. I don't know if I'll be able to do this live and not crash the machine. I need one of those things. So I'm going to try this. If it crashes the machine, I'll boot. Just remember what orange looks like. Orange is the worst. Yeah. Right now, it looks like it's the correct Apple II super deep near red orange color, right? Uh-huh. So mm-hmm. I'm going to yank this chip out while it's running and the video will go away. Oh. Burnt orange. I'm going to try to remove this chip while it's running. Yeah, and it's like, I don't know what to do with myself. Ah! Now it went pink, purple. Mm. Well, the orange has now turned green. Now, Everything shifted, without, yeah. The, the chip isn't in the machine. Right. Yeah. I'm going to put the original chip that goes in here. Yeah. Now, okay. it doesn't look right, does it? It looks off. Like, look at the purple, for example. Mm-hmm. It's not right. 
The blue yeah. is yeah. like a little green. The green is a little bit teal. Everything's shifting. Yeah. Right? So that's what my chip does. It fixes that problem. That's because when they made the Apple III, they're like, ah, oh, let's do color. I oh, just make it work good enough. Who cares? Yeah. yeah. The phase shift, like they were able to color. Pull... This is an office machine. Yeah. yeah Who yeah, wants color? Good. There you, you go. See, now that my colors. Are... That's much better, have, yeah. Who would ever want a like a pie chart with colors on it? In yeah, business? Exactly. <laughs> These people are doing word processing so, and spreadsheets. What do they need color for? Super yeah. high resolution. Oh wait, you need CGS for that. Yeah. <laughs> Eighty column text. Ooh, All right. fancy. I love how the 2E had 80 columns built in, but you had to buy the extra add-on card just to, like tell it, like, turn that on. That's so silly. Yep. <laughs> Yay! So it Yay. works. Well, not the one I built. I need to test it, but yeah. I need to figure out why what I built wrong on it and fix it. But minor, but minor problem. This one you're showing us is another one that you built, right? Yeah, this one I'm showing you is a is the I call it my test article. It was the it's serial number zero, basically. Uh, it's the first one I built um, using the final the final boards. But technically, I also have another one, which is really my true ooh. test article. That's this that was built using uh, Gen Gen One boards, and all of these chips belong to Petter Puskarik because he's the one who gave me the board to clone. These are Petter's chips. <laughs> yeah, and of course, you can see here too. It's got some bodges on it because I've missed some traces mm. on the design, but this one works as well. The set works just fine. It was uh, Petter's birthday yesterday. Yes! Okay. Happy birthday, Petter! So, that's it! That's the whole thing. That's the whole shebang and kitten caboodle and shazam ba doo, -ba -doo. All right, cool. Build mine and send it. <laughs> Build yours and send it. Got it. Done! I... I I ordered the cap kit from jcm-one.com. From 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 where 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 did you order that from? Where did from jcm-one.com. Now uh, I'm going to leave it out until the new cap kit comes. <laughs> yeah. So that I don't un so I don't unintentionally turn it on and try to do something because I know I'll forget. Yeah, when I discovered that I needed to replace the refills in my Apple Tree power supply. I just left it sitting out loose, so yep, I that's wouldn't what I just be tempted did. to play yep. with the computer. Exactly. <laughs> that's what I just did. I left it upside down with the power supply on top of it. I'm like, it's staying there till the caps come. So, Joe, is your goal to replace every single chip on that with something you made? <laughs> no, just the custom chips you can't get anymore. <laughs> oh, okay. Which is what these are. I've seen a number of people have failed 6502s in their Apple Trees lately. Yep. You mm -hmm. just throw it. Well. Just throw into weird. 6502 in it. Well, here's the thing. Even chips, there's this thing called electron migration that can actually happen mm -hmm. in the silicon substrate. So over time, even really, really reliable chips like the venerable 6502 will fail. I've seen a lot from 1980 to like 82 mm -hmm. just go bad. But all the earlier ones, like the really old ones, and then everything from like 83 and newer usually are good. It's like there in was two or three years where they were just something was off. Probably a nuclear test blew radioactive contaminants across a weird part of the United States where they were building yeah. chips. Maybe. You know. Oh, okay. Um, Frank, there was this. I have to explain yes. this to you because you're too old, you're too young. There was this thing that we had called the Soviet Union, that was Russia and a whole bunch of other countries, and they had a bunch of nukes. And so I've heard of Russia. And it was called yeah. the Cold War. Uh. And and we were both threatening to annihilate each other. So we did a lot of nuclear testing to make sure our bombs would work. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. You, Is that what happened with Japan? I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but anyway. <laughs> so no. Um, so in this, this Apple III, all mm -hmm. of the custom replaceable chips are replaced in this machine. This is the Apple III I'm going to bring to Kansas Fest as a demonstration. So you can see all of this cool hardware working. I have awesome. uh, Bob Justice's SOSHD boot, boot ROM in there, which with a properly modified SOS boot image can boot your boot image directly from external um, uh, 
what do you want to call it? Hard drive like media. From, so from a compact flash from Apple for a CFA 3000 or a booty card mm -hmm. or any of that stuff. Here are the set of the ROM timing chips, which are just or RAM timing chips, which are just some uh, cool. small ROMs. Those have all been replaced. There are two chips underneath here that I'm not focused. Mm -hmm. so you can't see. You can't see them, but there are two chips under the RAM board that I've replaced. This is called the sync ROM, which helps with some video timing circuitry. And then here, which the other one is, it's not in there because they have three, they have three cards or have two cards are in there, is the video ROM, which I've also replaced, which is this one. Right. Oh, focus, where am I? Where's the camera? Look at Dude. how big it is. It's huge. Big. Huge. So, and then of course, the very first chip I ever did, very first reverse engineering project ever. The JC keyboard encoder. Universal keyboard encoder. Ooh, ooh. So this yeah. Apple III is fully decked out with all, re all new chips, so to speak. If anything dies on this from this four point, forever, there is a replacement chip to fix it. Now where's the clock? Right here. <laughs> oh, this one doesn't have a clock chip. Hey, this yeah. is my plus. My hey, plus one has a clock chip. My food is arriving, so I'm going to take off. Okay. See you, Adam. Thanks for stopping in and hanging out with us. I'm about Thanks. to end the yeah, man. So have a good dinner, I, uh, man. Appreciate have watching me do this. See you guys. Bye. Yep. See ya. And that's it. I'm going to get, uh, I'll order 10 of those uh, clock chips. 100 of those so clock I'll send chips? You one. 100,000 yeah, no. of those clock chips? 10. I think that's enough to send. trillion of those clock chips? Got it. Send to those of us who have them. Yes. The Apple threes. Yeah, dollar seventy a piece when you buy ten. That's yeah, I'll yeah take that. that's not bad. Cool. No, that's cheap. Me like it. We need them. We need them. I don't yes. know what we use them for, but we need them. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh, that's all for the stream tonight. Thank you all for stopping by. Thank you, Frank, for stopping in and hanging out with me. Yeah. And thank you to Adam for hanging out with me. And thank you to Javier yeah. who was here earlier. And thank you for a uh, Sean Geek with social skills uh, for hanging out with us as well super duper awesome thank you to everybody in the chat who asked questions and all of that stuff um that was super awesome uh right while you're here before you leave for the night if you haven't hit the like button hit the like button that helps the channel out it helps people know that like i'm doing this because then it'll tell other people that watch similar content to what you watch that hey this other cool person's got this other content so do that if you're watching and you're not subscribed, like how? Like subscribe or something? Like do that? Dan K, send me a good card. I will fix your card. Hush. <laughs> Hush. I test every card before it goes out. I'm not going to send out any bad cards, I guarantee. Um, and uh, of course, you know, if you want to get one of these cards, you can go to jcm-1.com or get any of those replacement chips for your Apple III, plus blue scuzzies, T-shirts, other cool stuff that's there. If you want to be uh, a patron and be able to hang out with me on streams like this, like Frank and all the others did, you can go to uh, Joe's Computer Museum there on Patreon. And as for as little as a dollar a month, you help support my operation and you get to hang out with us in the Discord and get links to this cool stream and hang out with us. And finally, if you want to find me on social media, just look for Museum Joe on all of the big, all of the, 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 the main places and you will find me. Um, one last question I saw, Dan K. Does this work with the CPM card in? Um, I am 99% certain it will, um, but it'll only work in CPM mode. It's not like you put it in CPM mode and then like do the Apple II at the same time. Um, however, if we want to wait, if we want to like not end the stream and like check real minute, real quick, we'll take five more minutes. I'll pop the card in there and see what happens. Why not? Let's do it. We've Let's, all got time. Let's do it. You got time. So um, let me find my test card. It is over here. Now, Joe, which card was it that you said took two slots, essentially? What card did I say what? Took two slots. Was that an Apple III card or no? That's the, the, one the that card we worked space. on tonight. That's the uh, yeah, Titan yeah. Two, 3 plus 2 card set. Yeah. Um, well, that's what I'm thinking. There's only four slots total. Yeah. So I'm just trying to think of space. Yep, yep. Uh, I, how can I describe it? So the first card that came out was the 3 plus 2 card. So you mm -hmm. could get the 3 plus 2 by itself originally. And what all that did was eliminated the, the uh, memory bottleneck 
um, the 48K memory bottleneck and allowed you mm -hmm. to like run real Applesoft and some other stuff. Um, then the 3 plus 2 card came out. And in order to make the, or the 3 plus 2 E card came out, in order to make that work, they you had to make some bodge wire changes to the original 3 plus 2 card. Uh, and so all the sets you find, they have those bodges on it. Mine has the bodges integrated into the PCB, so there's not like fly wires. Sure. So you can't use the 3 plus 2 card by itself in my set. You have to buy both cards together. Because it's been modified specifically yep. for 3 plus 2 E card. So anyway. Gotcha. So this is my test article number two of my soft card, the soft card three. Um, because test article zero ended up going to Petr Puskarik again because he let me um, borrow his card mm -hmm. to clone it. And test article one is broken. I don't know why it doesn't work. So we use TA2. Um, so we're going to turn this off. I'm going to. So you can get the trilogy of these cards at yes. jcm onecom Absolutely. So we're going to put this card in here. And then I'm going to real quick switch it to the CPM disk. So you can actually see. Boop. It's waiting for me to give it a disk. So let me go find the CPM disk. Now, are you, are you using your email, floppy email? Um, I'm using a W drive. So effectively, yeah. Okay. Uh, Mm -hmm. Same difference. There you are. So this machine, look at that. As you can see, has all three cards in it, and yet it's booted to CPM. Woo. So you can have all three cards in there at the same time. Yep. You can have your cake and eat it too. Yes. With the trilogy. Yes. Buy your cake from jcm-one.com. <laughs> I'm so proud to help feed your family. Thanks, Dan. Now I need to consolidate the cards into one. Uh, Sloopy, I don't believe I can do that because they explicitly have to be in slots two and three. If you put them in one and two mm. or the three and four, it w they don't work right. I think the software is hard coded to expect the cards in those specific slots. Um, so I I don't think it will work if you if you don't do that. That's that is true. Yeah. Um, if I can find a way around that, then yes, I could integrate those onto one card but it would require going down to um, probably a double-sided four-layer um, uh, surface mount board, which that would really reduce expensive. the cost, but it's going to take me like a year to engineer the stupid thing because yeah. um, I'm not that smart. <laughs> so being I could scan board and draw over wires and, and have BCB made. That's about I'm not – yeah. So, being anyway, the user – a trilogy of cards the yes. code names have to be the father son and holy spirit right yes yes sure. <laughs> i knew it i knew it i knew it why not maybe i don't know anyway that's it for tonight again thanks for everybody for stopping by hit the like button hit subscribe thanks to frank and javier and uh adam and uh, sean who all stopped by mm -hmm. um the cards do, do see people keep asking me questions. The cards do different things then. Sorry, I don't know them much at all. Yes. Okay. So yes. the soft card, the soft card three is a Microsoft design card that allows you to run CPM on the mm -hmm. Apple three. It's similar to the soft card for the Apple two. It does the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. That's all that card does. It's basically an entire uh, CPM compatible computer on a card that has special I don't know, input output port stuff a doodles to know how to do to how to redirect the console to the keyboard and video input of the Apple three. That's all it is. So I'm glad he asked this question because I just realized that the two cards that you were selling are bundled in a set. Did you buy two sixty nine? No, no, no. I didn't buy them yet, but but I didn't realize that the third card was listed on the site already as well. I thought yes. that was just the two cards. Now we're no. talking about the three cards. Yes. Now I got three it. cards for your Apple three. Yes, I got yes. it. There you so, go. Yeah. So th this, this, you know, the three plus, the three plus two. Card, I didn't realize those two were bundled. Yeah. The, these have to go that together. That makes sense. They absolutely have to go together. Well, that's why it takes up two slots. I finally got it now. I thought yep. that there was just a clearance issue that it was taking nope. up two slots. Nope. I got it now. Nope. They were designed. There we go. 
-hmm. So I'm glad he asked that question because now I finally figured it out. <laughs> and yeah, so that's it. Um, hopefully, interesting. I want to be able to get a parallel card so that I can clone that as well. And just so people can have a parallel card to print from their Apple three. So I guess so. it's a good thing I bought one then. While we were on stream. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> yes. Did you buy did you buy that? Did you buy that card? I know I bought the buy it now one. You said you oh, I didn't see on a buy it now ten dollars. I'm, I'm looking at that one for ten. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I bought one for forty bucks. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm watching this one. To wait well, until if you get don't get that one, yeah. if you don't get that one, message me and let me know, and then I'll send you the one that I get. Ooh, cloning opportunities. Exactly. So yeah, if for some reason you don't get it, let me know. Because um, I, there was only two listed, and I didn't want to change a chance of not getting one, so I'm like, I better get it now. So yep. yeah, so if for some reason you don't get that one, let me know and I'll send Universal it. Universal parallel inter in interface. Does this thing have any special chips on it? I don't think it does. It's got a switch. It looks it pretty looks standard. It's like all standard. It's got a PAL chip on it, which may be difficult to reverse engineer. But that PAL chip may have somebody may have already dumped it. Yeah, I'm just looking at it. Here. Sure. Yeah. Right. You, like I'm pointing at my screen, like you can see me pointing at my screen. Like right in the center of the caption is a is that's a pal. Yeah, I see the longer grayish, light grayish one. It may just also be a, a four bit ROM. I'd have to look at the schematics, and schematics will say. Um, but Heck, the rest most of the, of the card is freaking capacitors and resistors. Yeah, this stuff all right. Yeah, that all right there. That's yeah. all filtering. That's that's bus filtering. It's it looks like ticks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Resistor pack right there. Yeah. So the yeah, little schedule. orange things are are probably they are two two zero, so they're like twenty two picofarad um, mm -hmm. capacitors. The the black things are just ferrite beads, which are effect active. They act effectively as really really low value inductors. And those RPs are resistor back packs. They're some sort of like filters. Yeah. Those, those may be still available, but if they're, they may just be resistor packs too. It's hard to say. I may be able to replace them with individual resistors or, or a newer version of something. Yeah. yeah. This might be this, able to get rid of all that garbage and simplify it. The rear port scares me because it's like, like, like I don't understand why it's got the blockers to change, and then it. it's got yeah, and then it has these pins. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. The upside too because is I'll be able to the... get this little rear panel thing. I might be able to uh, sure. I would imagine you first could engineer that. that and make a three D printable version of it. Yeah, because you could do that in whatever the CAD thingy was. Yeah, Open SCAD is what I use, but you can use Tinkercad. Yeah, there you go, Tinkercad. That's what I was thinking of. Anyway, you should clone an orange micro PC card for Macintosh. Ha <laughs> Yes. And then Jeremy just said, make a parallel serial card for the Apple III. Don't need a serial card. It's got two built-in serial ports, but the parallel. Yes, it does. Absolutely. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to call the stream for tonight again for the ninth yep. time. Thank you for everybody who stopped by. Hit <laughs> like and subscribe and stop asking questions. I love you, chat. Um, bye, everybody. Thanks, Frank. See ya. Later. Bye. Bye. Go. 